The Dan Libertard Show with Stu Gotts is presented by DiGiorno. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. We are live from Las Vegas, Nevada for the Super Bowl. And we have our first inaugural edition of Drooperty. We are asking Kansas City fans and San Francisco Bang Bang Niner games the important sports trivia questions. Do you know sports or are you just out here capped out flexing with a jersey on? Salute to Taylor Swift. We love you. And you know it's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. I got some questions for y'all, and I need some answers. Okay. Okay. Doom, doom, doom. Who is Taylor Swift dating right now? Who? Who is Taylor Swift dating? Uh. Hold on, hold on. Who you say? I say Nick Cannon. <laughs> Nick Cannon, ladies and gentlemen. Swifties and Nick Cannon link up. Wild and out. <laughs> oh, Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, she got it right. Yes, sir. They got a winner. Yeah, we got it. Bring them some merch bags. <laughs> if you answer one of these questions right, you finna shock the hell out of not only me, America, Jupiter, Germany, everybody. So let me, so let me stop talking about it. I'm gonna be, let me be about it. What is Roy Bellamy's favorite sport? Roy Bellamy's? Well, it sounds like Bill Bellamy. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say football. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Bellamy's favorite uh, sport is hockey. De -de 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 -de. You feel me? My dog got it right, bro. You feel me? Hey, my dog get a bag. Give, give, give my dog a bag. <laughs> what is Stu Gotts' real name? Stu God, I'm gonna say daddy, cause that's his dad. Ain't that his dad? Somebody give him a damn bag. But I'm sitting here with the power slap players in the building. What's your name, big dog? Dwayne the Iron Giant. You feel me? Dwayne the Iron Giant with the swagger. What's your name, bro? Jesse Juggernaut Nutting. Jesse the Juggernaut. You already see what's going on. And what's your name, brother? Robert the Real Deal Trujillo. Hey, the real deal. You, know, you feel me? Not Holyfield, but big Robert. You dig it? How high is a regulation NBA hoop? 10 feet. Oh, easily. Look, a boy slapped the hell out of you, and he know his sports. Give my boy the prize. Give my boy the prize. Oh, wait, he got the easy one. He got the easy one. Oh, damn. Okay, okay, okay. Look. He got the easy one. I'm gonna give you the next one. Right. Who is the highest paid player in the NFL? Patrick Mahomes. It's Joe Burrow, brother. You feel me? We're gonna come back. We're gonna let you give you a chance to redeem yourself. Please don't slap me. And now it's on to you. Can you name three Super Bowl halftime performers? The Eagles. Okay. Um, Poison and um. Mariah Carey? I don't know. Look, you are so wrong that I don't even see none of them damn names on the list. <laughs> I was looking. I'm like, where is Mariah over here? Halftime show. It's all about the football, not about Justin the halftime show. What you say? Nobody watches the halftime show. It's all about the football. All right, it is. Look. Oh, Justin Timberlake. Oh, wait, exactly. wait, 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 wait. Bruno Eminem, Mars. Eminem, Eminem, Eminem played last year. Look. Eminem played last year. Yeah, look, he is. played last year. <laughs> I know we back, but me and my dog just grooving. That's Everybody. how we doing, you feel me? Me and my dog gonna groove for a little second. You feel me? We gonna enjoy this night. We, we, we alive. We blessed. Look at us. Two blessed brothers. Now I'm back to the game. You feel me? I always put that stone in there, baby. Put that stone in there, baby. Brother, where you from? What's your name? My name's Willie Pulley. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. Hey, Asheville. You like them Panthers? What you think about them Panthers? That's right. I'm a Panther, but I'm losing. I'm going to have my stuff on Sunday, though. <laughs> who you got Who you got winning the Super Bowl? I'm going 49ers. Ooh. I'm going 49ers. Uh. Hey, Travis Kelsey, the Swifties, they ain't gonna like that one. Yeah, but they don't. <laughs> yeah. It's football. <laughs> Taylor can't win this game. Oh, no. That's no, polarity. Like that. Yes, we gotta get back to football. Yeah, we gotta get back to football. I, I like Taylor Swift, though. You don't like Swift? Yeah. I love Taylor Swift. I... But we gotta get back to football. Can you name all the professional teams from Las Vegas, Nevada? All the professional teams from Las Vegas about the Raiders. Yeah. Nuggets. Uh-oh. Basketball. My boy said the Nuggets. I think they in Denver. Oh, that's Denver. 
We got the Raiders, we got the, the Aces, the Las Vegas Aces, Aces, and we got the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Golden hockey Knights. team. I was close, I was thinking Nuggets. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with two players over here. What's your name, brother? Pete. Pete, what's your name, bro? Bobo. Bobo, hey, Bobo in the building. What NFL team has the most championships? New England Patriots. Oh, correct. Give my dog a bag, you feel me? Another question for the kid over here. Can you name three Super Bowl performers? Justin Timberlake, hey. J-Lo, hey. and Dr. Dre. Hey, he's a winner, you feel me? Look, man. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the first edition of Jeopardy. We got some players involved, we got some slappers involved, and guess what? We didn't get slapped, thank God, but them brothers knew they sports, and all the energy, the aunties knew they sports as well, man, much. Vegas is love, man. If you got some love outside, guess what? We coming to get some of it, man. Thank you for everybody involved, and tune in next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Jupiter is presented by DiGiorno. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Give it up for yourselves. Y'all are looking beautiful. I know y'all tired of hearing my damn voice by now. How long was that goddamn video? <laughs> Viva Las Vegas, everybody. Welcome, man. We're so honored to have each and every one of y'all involved, man, in here. This means so much to us, y'all, for real. If we don't get a chance to talk to y'all, just know, this means everything to us, you feel me? Shouts out to Greg, Cody, and the Hee Haw 3 over there looking sexy as hell. Oh my damn. Y'all already know that's my big brother right there. You feel me? Y'all know I, when I was homeless, that man over there got me believing in myself, you feel me? I opened the ESPN app and his old ass was believing in newspapers in the 2000s. <laughs> and I was like, damn, if this old ass joker can believe in himself, but well, damn it, I can shake it off, you dig me? And I got a tattoo on my dog. And pre brother, in front of all these people, I love you and I appreciate you, big bro. You are the man to me, you mean everything to me. You dig it? Give it up for Greg Cody. Yes, sir, man. We gonna keep the show going. I'm sorry I had to do that for you. I just, I gotta keep it real with y'all, you know what I mean? I, I can't keep it fake up here, you dig me? Thank y'all for being here. I'm gonna swing it over to Greg Cody and the Hee Haw 3, but first, we gonna thank Circa Stadium Swim. Oh my God! Please give it up for the Circa. All the employees in the uh, green track suits, fresh as hell. They got the freshest outfits in the world. You did salute to them. But let's toss it over to my bit dog, my brother, my muse, Greg Cody, and the Hee Haw Damn Two, cause it's three of them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Juju. I love you. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for being here. We hope you have a great time today and that you remember it. I'm going to introduce the stars of the show right now. This guy survived yesterday and got to today. He's got one show remaining as executive producer. His last show, love to Mike Ryan. She does PowerPoint presentations to find friends, cries from joy on football fields across America, and has an extra tooth. She's Lucy Rodine. He's the handsome nemesis of Billy Gill, a Cubanito meathead who was the object of lecherous desires none of us knew Stu Gott still had, 10-Day Tony. She can do the nation's finest F1 minute in French, college football coverage in too much Irish, and has 494 favorite teams. She also has feet. She's Jessica Smetana. He's a Nepo baby, worth $50 million, the fruit of my cobweb loins. I love him like a son, baby. He's Chris Cody. He's the father of Princess Claire and a hockey fan whose show might appear after some games on an occasional Friday. He's King Roy Bellamy.
He's a lighthouse of positivity with a questionable taste in at least a couple of his tattoos. Again, some love for Juju Gotti. He's afraid of everything except anarchy. He's Billy Gill. He's a despicable scoundrel stuffed with unending lies. But we all love him anyway. He's Stu Gotts. Oh, I almost forgot somebody. Hang on, who's that other guy again? Who am I introducing? Oh yeah, yeah. Dan Levitard, everybody! Dan Levitard! Whoop, whoop, whoop. And you know it. Playing Vegas during the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding Let's me? Let's go! The Dan Libertard Show with Stu Gotts is brought to you by Bayer Aspirin, the official sponsor of Fans Hearts. Are you kidding Let's me? Let's go! We had three legendary music acts yesterday. Wayne Newton, <laughs> Wu-Tang, Flavor Flav, and the only one performing music. They were here to listen to him perform is new Vegas act, Greg Cody. Greg Cote. Greg Cote, as Flavor Flav called him. <laughs> That's a fine. And the Hee Haw Three, yeah. who are only two because Greg didn't understand what he was doing when he named the band. <laughs> we do know it, thank you. Uh, thank you for who you are, that we know anywhere we go, you're gonna land with us. I think I can speak for the group when we meet you afterward, and we're gonna do this today, we're gonna talk to you. You move us deeply when you tell us, if you jump, we will catch you wherever you guys go. Because you listen to us from there, and you love us, and so now we do this uncomfortable dance for you. I kind of want to jump. I wish the stage was closer so I could jump like you guys. You should jump. try it. Right. You should jump. Try it. Right. Try it. Right. Right. You always right. surprise right. people with your athleticism. Jump. 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 Yep. <laughs> Trying to, we should maybe, can we move the, uh, Tyner, guess, let's move the stage a little closer if we could mid-show. Thank you. Yeah, Tyner, do that. Purr. <laughs> uh, forgive me for this because I think it's blasphemy. Uh, DeMar Hamlin did not win comeback player. What? I mean, the fake punt kind of screwed it all up for him, right? <laughs> Fun. I, just hypothetically speaking, if that fake punt never happens... He probably wins it, right? Uh, like, you had, like, a, a spotlight moment where everyone kind of remembered, oh, this guy has, like, a half tackle and now a failed fake punt. Were they going for a moment with that fake punt? Like, do they so, put him in that spot because they're like, this will be a thing. This so is an SB. He kind of had a moment, I mean. I don't know. When he came like, back to life? They yes. said the reason why it looks so bad is when they get a certain look from the other team, they run a fake punt. There needs to be one guy on the staff that's like, uh, Mar Hamlin should not be doing that. Forg forgive me, I understand getting into the nuances of this. I just want you to know, right before the Super Bowl, a big event that is uh, morally questionable and we all capitalize on, um, <laughs> that uh, the comeback player of the year was not a player who came back from the dead! <laughs> that was it. Joe Flacco did. Te technically. technically. Joe Flacco yeah. also did. Yeah. I mean, he had it Joe Flacco yeah. also and did. That, that right. was a big plot hole. You could argue Joe Flacco was more dead. Yeah. 
You cannot argue that. Joe he Flacco played for the said, Jets. Joe yeah, Flacco it's said he did not want that award. If you don't want the award, don't accept the award. Give it you to DeMar Hamlin. I mean, I love hot he takes on a Friday that. before the no, Super Bowl. No, we need to threaten it. No, Flacco, do the right thing. Flacco, <laughs> give, give your award. Give it back. Yes. Give yeah, it give back. Give it back. Give there we go. Back. Good. Yes, thank you. Guys, like, did you not right see the thing, fake Flacco. pun? Crowd work, Chris. Do, do, but do the right thing, Flacco. He came back. Oh, come on, this goes without saying. No, nope. from the dead. <laughs> I mean, he made the playoffs as a Cleveland Brown. That's, in yeah. many ways, more impressive. I gotta be honest, Dan. Vegas has kicked my ass. Yeah, yeah you. This- City, man. We got out to a good lead. I mean, I was up, yeah. We were we, up like, you know, 15 going into last night. We gave him way too much time on the clock. Vegas won on a 24-0 run, and I am destroyed this morning, you, man. You left, you left Patrick oh. Mahomes too much time. We're the Dolphins on Monday night, and Vegas is the Titans. <laughs> You're Shanahan in the Super Bowl. Ooh. <laughs> Too soon. What happened? Jesus. Jeez. What happened there? No, the Shanahan family was here today. Wow. Shamley. <laughs> We're cooking. Yeah. Friday, Chris. Yeah. You want to get Purr for Purdy back off the ground? Nah, come on. I want better. you to do it. Let's go. Purr. Who's purring with me? It is the oh, oh, that was a dumb bumps. Goosebumps. Every time. <laughs> Dan, I have an idea. Oh, Lord. Like to present to you and these lovely fans in the great city of Las Vegas. Crowd work, Billy. It didn't work so well. <laughs> yeah, Las yeah. Vegas. They're, they're still bothered by the Shanahan line. I, I'm sorry, Shanahan family. I was thinking, Las Vegas seems like the perfect place to have a Super Bowl. This has been a great week. It's been amazing. And yeah. they love having it here. And there's endless things to do. That was the whole idea. <laughs> it should just always be in Las That's Vegas. It's a good idea. Yeah. Wait, That's every great. year? Yeah. Every yeah. year in Vegas? Every year in Vegas. Every what do you guys year think? <laughs> I mean, we Justice can't really... for David Sampson. What? Boo. 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 Go pee pee. Hashtag. Okay. How he came he back from you? the dead. <laughs> <laughs> he did, yeah. yeah. Like, you got Andy. He got more first place votes than everyone else, but Flacco beat him with the second and third place votes. Mm. This guy's oh, I don't so, like that. Electoral this, college, Dan. This guy yeah. is so mad right now because he has 17 signs and you went to the one person and she only has one sign. He's been flipping through six signs already in this first segment. Go back segment. to the Stugatz book song. <laughs> Go back to it. Stugatzbook.com. I mean, Thank you, everyone. If you want your signs uh, read on the air, don't lead with the Taylor one. Yeah. 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 This yeah, is the saddest college Justice game for Taylor. Ever. <laughs> Hey, look, our guest list. Strong. Demographically old. <laughs> Don't do that to Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> Dominique just showed up five minutes before the show. Said, uh, yeah, you texted me yesterday. I'm here. Oh. Like, you never said yes. <laughs> I have a run of show. I have never, never planned to show more. Well, but should. we love Dominique, so <laughs> doing that. So he's coming up soon? Soon. Yeah. Next segment. Yep. I promise. And and when when is Maniscalco? Uh, the segment after that. Uh, Jessica, I shouldn't say this to him, but you didn't know who that was recently, right? Let's board, let's let's keep that in the in the production <laughs> yeah. meeting. There's you might a few be people already. in our crew that had never heard of Sebastian Maniscalco. Okay, I was just he's blown a very away by this. Popular comedian. He's. I mean, I don't even understand. Top Madison five Square right now. Yeah. He can Easy. sell out Madison Square Garden five times. Yeah, like, biggest box office right now. Like top five box. Well, office. he's done two movies with De Niro. Like two of them because Bill Burr and some others are getting some of the comedy power that they're giving. Uh, you know, the Rogan guys. Like, there's a. We had David Spade on like ten years ago, and you asked him like. Who's next? Who's the next guy that could potentially play arenas? And he's like, there's this little known guy that just opened up for me at the comedy store yesterday. His name is Sebastian. And he only called him Sebastian. It was like, like Madonna or Cher at the time because Maniscalco is not. It's a tough one. Yeah, I can, I can see. <laughs> Let's chant just... it. Sebastian. <laughs> oh, please. Get... No, I mean, crowd. No, the no, syllable situation. Like, what was his I... last name? Sebastian yeah. Maniscalco. Yeah, the syllables don't work. No, I mean, this is, no, no. I'm going to flip this table over. No, but please help me with this part because I want them to feel the energy when they come up here of what it's like to do, you know. Do yeah, Sebastian has no idea what it's like to perform in front of people. <laughs> no, but I want the people to give him the love before he ever comes out here. Like, invigorate him. He's a very likable comedian. And him and Carrot Top, I think you'll get their best effort if he feels your energy. 
familiar with how that works. <laughs> I will do my part. Do you want me to cheer for him? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell us exactly yeah, what you me. want us to do for these guys. Maniscalco. <laughs> I can line up on the Maniscalco. Sebastian. Maniscalco. All right. Anybody Sebastian. that knows how to pronounce his last name can be on that Yeah, side. go over there. Yeah. Yeah. Pronounce his last name. <laughs> Can you we go to the Greg Cody Hee Haw 3 stage to get something that aggressively introduces our comedians? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm distracted, Dan. There are a couple guys over there, and they are looking good. Yeah, you oh, guys. they knew exactly who guys. we were talking about, They're, too. I mean, I'm trying to look at the Hee Haw 3, but I can't. Not you three. <laughs> steak sauce behind you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the confidence in overhearing their three jack looking dudes over there that look good and they knew that we were talking about them <laughs> because they saw our audience <laughs> and said who else could they possibly be talking about but us it does look good though oh my god Keep whatever you're doing is that oil what are we using Deca? you on the trend you a trend bro yeah you're the- on track i can tell that's trend are those the slap guys <laughs> those guys are in town. Yeah, they're a power. They, you want, those guys got some hands. You guys seen these guys around? These slap dudes, like Bruce. Chris, go get slapped. It'd be odd if they didn't have hands, Chris. <laughs> it's almost. I'd say. Dare I say, hands are essential to power. Nah, slap. but you guys. Yeah. They, these people know what I meant. You've seen these guys, ham hocks. Hmm. <laughs> we should track down Bruce, the the former Reaper, and get him in power slap. It'd be a fucking titan. Billy, oh, how much would I... Nobody got the joke you were making about thick-hand, thick-handed Bruce who worked for us for a while and was literally falling asleep while he worked. <laughs> it was, Mike, my last day on the job. It was a good joke, Mike. <laughs> it was way inside, Mike. Last day on the job. Bruce, thick, he had Mike. thick, meaty, aggressive lumberjack hands. <laughs> yeah. Too big for an old man. We yeah. had him on Mystery Crate, if you guys want to go find that episode. <laughs> oh, for the love of yeah. God. I'm just saying, we're talking Bruce. <laughs> the boss. Billy, how he came much? came back from the dead. <laughs> how much would I have to pay you, Billy, to literally get one of those guys, let one of those guys slap you, like a professional slapper? You're the, you're the one getting slapped. Not no, me. I'm just saying, if I put, like, well, what's the number? Yeah. I'm not getting slapped. I think for. No, but say the number. Oh, Billy, everyone well, has wait. a number. I'll say eat one number. for two mil. Two million, I'll eat one. 40 million. Chris, you would eat one for less than two million. A, I mean, that seems like a liability issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a waiver. I thought hey, that let's do a wacky thing where Stugatz gets punched for a million dollars and he dies. I thought that there it was. It would be a great final act. I'll like, it would it. be perfect. He still wouldn't win comeback podcaster of the year, though. <laughs> no. I thought there was a chance I was going to get slapped in the face yesterday for free by Josh Allen. Oh, man. He met his nemesis yesterday. What happened Dana? there, please? Well, what happened? It was great. You know. <laughs> Just trying to promote Subway and their cookies and their churros and their pretzels. And Josh Allen was the guy doing it. So we said, let's talk to Josh. Yeah. Dan, I was hoping I wouldn't have to pay the piper. I was hoping I could just kind of get through it without anybody knowing what was up. And then Juju made sure to kind of point that out to him. That yes. maybe but- someone in the past said that he had a stupid face. <laughs> and then he turned and he said, was that you? <laughs> <laughs> but in fairness, I went in there very peacefully, and he's the one that started with me. Billy, that's a lie. Me. He bullied me for my love of ketchup, of all things. <laughs> uh, Billy was worried about me doing, like bringing him into the whole Josh Allen thing. And because Vegas has kicked my ass, I forgot to do it. Thankfully, Juju did. Billy had to face his nemesis. Josh Allen. Wait, you just be, forgot to add? That's like I, why we were, were going to talk to him. We were four or five questions in, and then Juju, thankfully, was there because he's a Bills fan. So he asked Josh Allen the question. Josh immediately realized it was Billy. They stared at each other face to face. I thought Billy was going to get his ass kicked, but <laughs> Billy survived it, and we're thankful that he did. But it was funny, man. Josh Allen's a good sport. He yeah. is. He had, had I gotten have a punched face, in the though. face, though, I could have retired. <laughs> like, it would have been amazing. Like, the idea of him punching me in the face very publicly in front of so many witnesses the settlement oh. <laughs> did so you ask josh it? allen for an autograph Stu gods i that... did yes he autographed my hat <laughs> who is on your hat right now you have a, a little dicky autograph I josh got, uh, allen josh allen a little dicky we had him on Radio Row. Romo Dunze is on there. He is. Uh, Michael Penix is on there sebastian whose name i'm not going to try to pronounce is going to be on there pretty soon got some good names here Valuable she just had hat. dominique do it too why, we'll why stop there? It, Get yeah. steak sauce and yeah. those three dudes on trend in the back. <laughs> so that's yesterday when we went out. Mike had a DJ set yesterday, by the yep. way. 
A well, so applause what for applause. Here? Mike keeps underplaying this, and I'm like, how cool is that? So he does the Gronk Super Bowl, he does the DJ set, and then he comes to this city, and while Hee Haw 3 is performing over there, he quietly hits a club that everybody would have been at if we'd told them he was doing the DJ sets, because everybody loves the DJ sets. Well, Dan, a lot of people came out. I appreciate all the fans that were there. I recognize some of the faces, but as you know, I am a man of the people. I love getting out there, reaching out and touching folks and, and, and smiling for photos. I am as personable as they come. <laughs> so a fan asked me, hey, would you like to DJ with me tonight? I was like, yeah, of, of course. I'm a champion of the people. I'm the people's producer. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and I thank everybody for coming out. Even Sugats came out. Yeah. So I had to play a really laborious uh, Grateful Dead song. I thought you were going to headline this. I thought... The, this show was going to end by us opening us the, up the club live, like Friday night, send people into the Vegas. <laughs> well, it's not happening. Well, that's no. not happening, but I think Greg Cody's going to play Lovely Cruise. <laughs> Limit our so expectations. So a, uh, a, funny thing, a funny thing happened, Dan, during uh, Mike's DJ set. We got a clock there. We got to finish up the set. I'll tell you about it next. Uh the Dan Lebitard Show with Sue Gotts is presented by 1-800-Flowers.com. DraftKings official flowers for Valentine's. never clear am I prepared it's never certain and now the end is near every breath could be my final curtain I know I promise more but it's hard to bring one every Tuesday I'm Greg, that's how it was back in my day. Oh, now, what more, what more could Dan want? I've done vending machines, hotel robots, and then it's cookbooks. I will appeal. I like the way my dumb man. Yes, I am Greg, and that's how it was back in my People, let's worth go. Fox. Worth 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 be offended by that? That's facts are facts. You want me to argue? It's like saying I'm better looking than you. You can't be upset about that. Oh, goddamn. I'm coming for you, though. Valerie's cleaning me up. <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> Valerie's trying to get you to a five. You'll never get to nine, eight, ten territory, which is where I was born, bitch. <laughs> You but this more. guy, yeah. this guy's trying to catch up. He's trying to catch up. I know, he's caught up, cheap dog. ass fur. What's that, macaque? <laughs> what the fuck? Something like that. Baby. Nice. I can give it to you after. Green suit. You look like if Plankton from SpongeBob was a pimp. It's outstanding. <laughs> so sexy. Huh? What? Why well, you had a macaque on you? Huh? That is macaque. You <laughs> can go to jail for that, but it's worth it. Yeah, I love a good macaque. Is he the coolest guy on this team? Or no. <laughs> oh, my bad. I did see Lucy. That was hey, guys. Lucy, last night, 
was on one because Caitlin yeah. Clark was playing basketball. So we're all having a drink at the bar, and Lucy shows up and tries to talk to us for a little bit, but eventually is arguing with the bartender because uh, the <laughs> Iowa game is not on in Las Vegas like people would care, and then she's on her phone yelling at anybody who would come close to her because Caitlin Clark is out there getting cooked. That's not funny, and that's her phone. You apologize to me right now, or we're not friends anymore. No, I'm sorry. Clayton Clark is a little overrated. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, she oh, I mean, no. she couldn't oh, be more no. highly rated, so it's hard to not be. I mean, if you're ranking people, you go Martin Jesus? Luther King. Caitlin Clark. <laughs> Maybe in the February? Two. You go Jesus over MLK in February? Oh. How MLK. dare you? Jesus. How dare you? Then you. Kick saving a beaut. Civil Jesus rights. Is black, though. It's important. Why do you? You didn't start a civil rights chant? Is it because? Civil. No? No. Uh, uh, thank you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. Civil. Can't right. I heard you guys address the um, Flacco. <laughs> the Flacco. He came and, back uh, from the dead. Yeah. And it is it February. <laughs> I, I feel They're you. Second highest ranked person to come back from the dead famously. It's Jesus, and then who's second? The Undertaker. It's Damar Hamlin. But I the was Undertaker. Uh, that's the a good Undertaker. One. I think Nikki Six from Motley Crue. I would say Grateful that. Dead. I mean, <laughs> this is appropriate. When Jesus came back from the dead, they. Didn't really give him an award. They weren't too happy about my dog. If anything, they were doubting him. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty much. So I feel like we're on course. And two, three thousand years from now, Hamlinism will be a thing, and it'll be something that we all believe in. So who needs an award if you got a whole damn religion? What's wrong with y'all? And to be fair, lots of animals are capable of uh, resurrecting themselves. Macaque? Nah, macaques. They can't do it. The, I think the wood frog can. Immortal jellyfish also can regenerate its cells and kind of start its life over. You know a lot about animals. Oh, woolly caterpillars. Woolly caterpillars come back from the dead. I'm just hanging around this show until Ron McGill gets tired and I can be the animal guy. <laughs> that's all I really care about. I pretend to care about sports so that occasionally Dan will let me come on, come on here and talk about woolly caterpillars. <laughs> Uh, you are more fascinated by the animal kingdom than anybody here? You, you are amazed by the animal kingdom? Animal off. <laughs> he, uh, he starts his podcast with an animal yeah. tidbit. Yeah, it's normally random facts, including animal facts. Yesterday, we did a live show, and we started it with this little-known fact about the green, what is it, the Greenland shark? Yeah, they don't reach sexual maturity until 150 years old. They live to be about 250 years. Also, if you were to eat their flesh, you would get drunk. It's true. Stop giggling. That ain't a joke. Stop laughing. You think I'm trying to make you laugh? Trying to make you smart? I don't want to tell you what to think. Can you tell us about the live show? Because the idea that you and <laughs> they... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Dan missed it, but my dog Roy got it. it. I did miss it. I'm getting sorry. old. I'm sorry. You. you want to know about the live show? I wanted to know about you and mm. Mina doing a live show together in Vegas. Like, uh, we're, we as a show are allowed to be proud of that, right? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, it is uh, a child of the Dan Lebetard universe that is grown. It's like the Miles Garrett of the children of the Dan Lebetard oh, universe, wow. where it once was a kid, but now it's a whole nother species because me and Mina are that awesome. So I appreciate you guys letting us, uh, or appreciate you for giving us the opportunity. You can early. clap now. And, oh, no, no, don't clap. Don't clap, don't clap, don't clap, don't clap, don't clap. I mean, you guys think I was actually being genuine? You just ruined it. I was just setting it up for a joke to undercut Dan. That's all. Fox. Now you guys Worth. blew it. No, Worth. stop Worth. it. Stop Come on. it. Stop Worth. it. Stop Worth. it. Stop Worth. it. Stop Need the punchline. Let's go. Doesn't nah, he, he missed it. They don't deserve it. Okay. The moment's over. Yeah, it's Everyone over. Did, yeah. So um, another thing I found out last night about Lucy was that she prized on people's conversations on uh, on flights. And, and I believe. everywhere else. Really? I love to eavesdrop. <sighs> You don't feel ashamed? No. I think that's the only acceptable place. On a plane, if, no. I, if, if I can see your phone through the crack and I got four hours to kill, like, The I'm worst thing it. on the plane is when you're... <laughs> it's the only place that's acceptable. At a movie theater, dick move. <laughs> <laughs> Doof. <laughs> Doof. Um, it's never acceptable. Isn't your life interesting enough? No? It's always real boring, too. It's like, just, just got on the plane. Just landed. 
<laughs> Give me the good stuff. It's not that boring if you're Lucy. <laughs> I had this woman on my flight here who was typing up like a complaint about her coworker, except she was it was a PowerPoint. So I was like, oh man, she's giving a presentation. Turns out she doesn't know how to open up a Word doc. <laughs> so she's changing the PowerPoint settings to look like a piece of paper. And she's writing about her coworker. I won't use their names, but she is not a nice gal. And she is very disrespectful to my girl Kathy, who's been in that company for 39 years. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, veteran. <laughs> and she was typing like this. She was like, Jess, why were you doing that? I mean, <laughs> that, that Lucy, PowerPoint was for uh, Bimmel and Bimmel alone. <laughs> Lucy has let loose in Vegas. I think uh, she was smoking cigarettes aggressively. Ooh, like it is, oh, it is so why my voice sounds like this. <laughs> you want one? <laughs> No heater. I, uh, we, a lot of us actually went out to Mina and Dominique's live show yesterday. Thank you, guys. Sincerely. And thank you for the insight because I hammered Trent McDuffie tackles oh. over nice. because of the insight. I found out that Bill Barnwell's middle name is Jerome. Yes. Jerome. That's Manash. actual. That, that, that was a real thing. I found that out that because thing, uh, Kevin Clark was there that the Miami Hurricanes still live rent free in everybody's heads. <laughs> I was attacked for my passion for the Hurricanes. But uh, you guys are pretty good at this football thing. Yeah, we're good. I would appre I want to say that I appreciate all you guys for coming and being a part of the show. However, buy a ticket. <laughs> oh, you cheap bastards texting me. Hold all on day. a second. Hey, you hey, said. Let me in. <laughs> you think you can get me in on the slide? The back door. Let me in the back door. Buy hey, a yo. ticket. You said on your show last week that you were shaming people who were pretending like they wanted to buy a ticket <laughs> when you knew you'd get them in for free. You're oh, playing both sides. <laughs> exactly. You don't get the game. I just like making people uncomfortable. Uh, if you would have asked me for it, or you would have said, paid, if you would have bought a ticket, I would have then said, Type of loser Wait. pays for a ticket. Dominique, yeah. also, you should be paying us because we were doing some crowd control work yeah. because there was a first date or something happening at your Second show, row. and they were talking the entire time. I've never done this thing so many times. I shushed them. <laughs> I literally, I had to go shush, and I felt so mad. She shushed. And then uh. they were like, did you hear that girl shush us? Oh, my God, that girl shush us. <laughs> and then I got really scared, so I like kind of like crowded in. They were also <laughs> holding each other's faces at one point. I did not like them. They some were, guy they were very at the disrespectful. Wrong time. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, that was I'm really telling you, weird. first date or something. <laughs> We're five minutes into the show, and some guy just slow clap. In the it silence. wasn't a slow clap. She said, we'll be right back. If we say, we'll be right back, what are you guys going to do? Clap. I started to clap, and I was the only one in the whole place she to do it. She started reading an ad. And she started reading an ad. Mina's like, all right, we'll be right back. And now, blah, 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 go in. It's just one clap there, awkwardly making us all uncomfortable, and I... Uh, Who needs me? Shame. <laughs> In fairness, he had no uh, idea you were going to a live spot. I mean, I'm thank proud you, that you guys, guys did. I mean, okay. We a lot had, of live spots. You guys are, hey, uh, fist me. I know, you guys are, <laughs> did you say what? Yeah, said okay. it. Right? Um, fist me. <laughs> we were. You didn't fist me like you did with Wayne Newton. Yeah, Wayne Newton fisted me <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Twice. Twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah. Twice. He and then he Wayne came on the show and they fists. fist bumped. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. He fisted me and then came on the show. Oh, jeez. That's a thing that happened. <laughs> um, Greg Cody can sing, guys, and I hate it. He legitimately can. I He's got a great it. voice. He sounds fantastic. It. Can you guys yeah. throw the show to him? Like, like, can you make a request of some sort? Can you ask him? As long oh. as Jeremy doesn't talk, oh. I'm good with it. Because we haven't okay. tested Dominic, his mic. We don't throw, want Jeremy to can talk. Can you throw our show over there I, so that they perform something for us that they've already performed or just one of their hit songs, one of their... Hee Haw 3's classic. We're calling an audible, guys. Get ready. I, I would love for them to do some sort of hit song that they've already prepared. I'd also like to make Greg Cody learn some Jodeci lyrics. That would make me so happy. Some mint condition? Oh, I would love to hear Greg Cody hit some shy acapella. Oh, mmm. -da he did sing some uh, Wu-Tang yesterday, though. Oh, God, baby, that was painful. I like it raw. Oh, yeah, can, yeah, can you do that? Can do you that. do that? Baby, I like it raw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's put him in. Put him in. Man. Let's go. Singing's hard, guys. <laughs> oh, baby, I like it raw. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Still off key. That which you, is that the sound that you made when O-D-B you made Chris? forever. That that's right. how we introduced <laughs> Wu-Tang. <laughs> <laughs> James Brown over there. It never can, gets they sexy. can play the wrong song, too. <laughs> oh, can baby, we? Baby, and you know it. Oh. And you know it. Baby, and you know it. 
and you know it, baby, and you know it. Yeti, can we get a, a, a wrong song, baby? No, don't do that to him. Well, let no, me get, let me get my loins ready. Yeah, <laughs> get those loins. I mean, you got to get the action. Baby! Song. You're wrong, 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 wrong. Not enough loins, Dan. More Ooh. loins. <laughs> Baby! Oh. You're wrong, 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 wrong. That's it. Oh, yeah. You are sexy. I love it. Loins in that one. I'm a Baltimore guy, sexy. so it, it means Oxford something special. Foxworth gave it a sexy? No, that was yeah. sexy. That is I the think... highest compliment from Dominic mm -hmm. Foxworth. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Because there's something sexy about... He didn't care how, how good he sounded towards the end. He was just like, I see her. I see her. Uh-huh. Baby! Yeah. Oh, I can't sing, man. I can do everything else. Leave me alone, guys. Oh, he lost his confidence at the end. We never We got that. his ass. Let's all lay. We, we got him. Get whoa, 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 whoa. Time's up. Sebastian Menescalco next. The Dan Lebitard Show at Stu Gotts is presented by DiGiorno. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. Bright light city gonna set my soul, gonna set my soul on fire. Sin city banging like my Hall of Fame boat, so get those stakes up higher. Viva Great Cody! Viva Great Cody! Lady Luck, please, you're gonna smile on me. Keep those lobos rolling hot, I know. We're gonna have more fun than the law allows, like an episode of The Greg Cody Show. Viva Greg Cody! Viva Greg Cody! Oh, there's a blackjack table and a roulette wheel, a fortune to win with every spin. I'm gonna conquer this city like it's PFPI, so let's let the winning begin. Viva Greg Cody! Viva Great Cody! Viva, Viva Great Cody! Woo! Hi, I'm Danny, Flair bartender at Circus Longest Bar. What's Flair? Let me show you. Roger, you're here. Hey, I'm here, buddy. I'm out. Let's go. Hi, guys. My name's Vache, and I'll be your bartender. <laughs> and I'm waiting to do this today. <laughs> oh, we're Hell nice yes. Oh, I'm not coordinated. Right, this isn't going to go well. Right Look at this guy. This is oh. Nice. Oh. <laughs> that was really nice, brother. This is, this is just. There's a priest. When do we clap? Oh, my God. Oh, when do we clap? Oh, my This is it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Oh, this man. is. What are we doing here? I want to learn how to do this. That. Is that what we're here for? That one? Yes, sir. Double ski? <laughs> She'll Double have one of those. Shots of vodka coming right up. Yeah. Oh, little my. Vodka here. Little vodka here. Little vodka here. Little here. Little vodka 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 here. Little you a witch. They're super blue. Oh. <laughs> suction, actually. Burn this okay. man. You got to teach me that one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nice for the ladies. My dog is an X-Man. That balance <laughs> is... I can't believe what I'm watching right you now. You could be an Olympian. Forever. This should be an Olympic sport. Ooh, yeah. But I'm actually amazed by Small this. Like, this is not a bit. Action. I'm not going to be able to do 2% of what you just did. There's no one else doing this in Vegas. This nah, guy, right here, come to the Cirque, like, this is it. Right, rare form. This is the peak. And he does very generous pours. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we make them like we drink them around yeah. here. Hell yeah, bro. Let's go. Never mess with Zorro. Thank so you. good, dude. That was fire, brother. I'm That's never going to be able to that is so cool. We're going to start with the stall because it's one of the simplest moves and also one of the most impressive that people like. Okay. <laughs> My leg's shaking. It's not going to help. Yeah. I think we're higher. Barely here. a shake. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I a flip I'm so a flip afraid speech. to move. That's the best one right there. Oh, Shit. Look at you over here. Oh, Captain. Oh, Montana. Montana. Yeah. 
Let's try to throw the bottle in the air a little bit this time. Let's start with one where you just throw it up. Easy Do you guys want to take a step back? Up and down. Throw it from the neck and catch from the neck. I don't think I can catch. Catch the neck, Lucy. Yeah, I can catch from the neck. Never mind. This next one's going to be very impressive, but it's not as hard as it looks. I want to adjust yours a little bit. Because it should be. The gym. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Go oh, so just put this here. A little closer. Thank you. We are making oh, sex on the back. beach shots. Sex on the oh. Beach. Hello. Okay. Okay. I can do this. Yep. Yep. Oh, you're good at this, Jeff. I got this guy. The form is amazing. So now take one. one. <laughs> yep. Two. You can go up a little bit to the right. To the right. Oh, nice. oh yes. To the right a little bit. To the right. To the right. Out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in that cup. This one. No, the other one. Ah. Okay. Yeah, keep going to the right. This yes. one. Yeah, perfect. So we're all in. Oh, Lucy. Wow. Okay. No, but that actually worked out really good. I don't good. think I did it right. Take the bottle in front, take two rotations, and throw it oh, behind just, your back. That's it, just I behind the back. Just like that, yeah. Show me yeah. the mechanics again, go ahead. Come on, you guys look pretty right uh, hand. athletic. What? Right hand oh, over the shoulder, cool. catch it here, no problem. Zoom okay. in, folks, so you're only going to get one take. One take quitter, here we go. <laughs> Honestly, not good. bad. Hey, did you jump like it to you, you catch it? Yeah. Ready? Okay. I'm about to break something. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead, flip it. All right, here we go. Juju. Hey, oh. Right okay. Now I feel it. Now I'm feeling confident. Now I'm feeling confident. Here we go. Okay, feel myself. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Did anybody see that? No, no, of course, no damn body saw that. I'm over here bleeding and nobody saw that. <laughs> hey, two in a row. In a row. <laughs> Let's go. Only at Circa, folks. Only at Circa. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Chris. Don't drop it. I'm going to have you make the drinks. How about that? Yes, sir. You okay. Make it it. okay. Yeah, I think we should make sex on the beaches for the ladies again. Only with their consent. I do love sex on the beach. Yeah. Okay, cool. Make the same mistake I made. Oh, Confidence. Oh, nice. For us. Confidence. Right. Nice. We're going to go you splash of OJ. Splash. <laughs> <laughs> and then a little bit of cranberry. So splash. Got it. Splash. Got it. Perfect. A little bit of I feel like I got the harder ice. task here. That's a little bit too much ice, though, honey. Let me help you out. What's the point of what I'm so doing? Icing entertainment. <laughs> like, he's just like, you stand over here and bounce. I'm going to teach you how to yeah. Hold that damn boot on the cup. <laughs> okay. I'm not holding it all right now. This okay. is all balanced. Go ahead and uh, put one shaker. I'm definitely inside not the squeezing other. the bottom of this. And then cup. one on top, just like. Should bounce it on your hat. Just like that. Yeah. Get what? Hey! Where's the applause at? I mean, jeez! Dog in Vegas, we man. out here. Yeah. Mama, I made it. You feel me? Every last. Yeah. Week. Now I'm going to flip these to Jess and, and Lucy, and they're going to catch it, okay? All right. Here we go. Get it. We're going to get one shot. One, two, right. three. Here you go, ladies. Thank you. Enjoy. All right, let's yes, do it. Cheers. Cheers. Sniff test. Cheers, ladies. Yes. Uh, make sure you tip your bartender. Right. Scale of one to ten, I need taste and then our, our performance. Okay, so taste, I think it's pretty solid. 100 out of 10. No, mm. I'd go full 10. Okay. Performance. I want to see you do it on the back of your hand next time. Mm. Yeah. No cutting corners. Yeah. Dude, you got injured. Dude, you, like, yeah, so. I'm We're weighted up, though, because of him. He, he yeah. crushed it. Like six but we are, we are one. We're one. Yeah. You know, there's no we'll I in team. No, so we give you guys no a seven. A seven? I've been a five all of my life, so I'm honored to be a seven yep. today. <laughs> Out here. The hundred for taste. Yeah. Nice. And by yeah. taste, a thousand for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'll take it. The real, I'll take it. The real hero. The Dan Libertard Show with Stu Gotts is brought to you by Bayer Aspirin, the official sponsor of Fans Hearts. This is exciting. Let's go. I told you to bring some energy for him. You have to understand. Yeah. We got somebody who is killing the comedy game. Killing it. Sold out Madison Square Garden five times. Think about that. That's crazy. Breaking his own record. He's got a TV show on Max Bookie. He acts with De Niro. And he currently has a residency at the Encore Theater at the Wynn that I hope I can get into the next couple of nights with my wife because I think your greatest strength, and thank you for joining us, Sebastian Maniscalco. The Stugats is so very strong in you, Dan. I am so uh, proud of you, Sebastian. Uh, looking for tickets, for tickets before the question. Uh, I admire you because of how likable you are. It is a rare trait. We need more of it these days. I, I appreciate it, and I gotta tell you guys something. Listen, I just came from Radio Row, or whatever you want it's to call it. Oh, that's heaven. It's, un it's no. got two people. There's nobody really paying attention. No. You come here, you got a live audience, you got some band over here that's fantastic. 
and you got 29 people on stage. It, I mean, it, you're not, you're not going to get this anywhere else in Las Vegas. So I'm happy to be here. And a fur coat. You don't see this at any other show. Thank you, Sebastian. Fur. You look great. And he's got some Giorgio Protini slip-ons, which I got to appreciate. Well, he's aspiring to your style, I believe. He's aspiring to be stronger fashion sense than you. You you pull it off casually. Dan, look at this velvet, though. Come on, look at this velvet. No, this is dolphin. <laughs> oh, no wonder. It wasn't wet, that's why. Velvet. Um, no, I appreciate you noticing the jacket and everything. But uh, nice to be here. Nice to be. Th yeah, give it up for the three people that are in the pool that they had to bring the lifeguards in for. Right? <laughs> lifeguards are like, yeah, it's going to be an easy day. And then one idiot gets in the swim. They're like, yeah, we got to work. So thanks to the lifeguards for coming in today in 50 degree. And thanks for uh, making your sign. Back in my day, people took pride in writing a book by the pride of the lion. This guy's advertising. We're going to clip that for Greg oh Cody. Oh, my God. You just did a promotion for Greg Cody of Hee Haw 3. He's taking a photo. He's over there taking pictures for his new book. All the money goes to animal charities as you wear a dolphin jacket. All right. Who knew? I don't know if this was a plant or what this was, but God bless you for making, making your sign gay. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't understand why you would dare to test Vegas with a, with a residency or with the excess of the city. In four days, it has kicked his ass. He, uh, has, he has lost to Vegas. Vegas has kicked my ass. In fact, leaving Vegas is more fun than getting to Vegas. Who the f*** wants to stay here for that long? I mean, honestly. He's killing Vegas, and I think he's, he's entitled. And hey, Vegas, relax, okay? It's the second straight day, you get heat from the Vegas audience. What are you doing? It's a heel. Don't say anything so, about the Shanahan. Are you saying that? You feed all my vices, Vegas. I'm sorry. You have you have a gambler's voice. Yes. Right? Yes. He sounds like he's been at the table for nine hours. Right. Smoking Hit cigarettes. Me again. So... Are you actually trying to win money out here? The only way, the only way you walk out of a casino with money is you have to actually work here. That's the only way you walk out of here. So, uh, no, I'm not hitting the, the tables at all. I do my Vegas very mild. I come in. Steakhouses. I, do I don't even do that. I do my two shows. I go up, and I watch a documentary. I mean... <laughs> I'm 50 with a six-year-old and a four-year-old, so I have no energy to go out clubbing, all right? <laughs> but you do have it for creatively making movies with De Niro, which is, I don't even, which one's better if I ask you with your heritage and everything else? Selling out Madison Square Garden five straight times, or you can say you had two, two parts with De Niro. Yeah, I mean, growing up, uh, watching Robert De Niro, I had posters on my wall with this guy, and next thing you know, he's playing my father, in a movie, which De Niro wanted to have my father on set coaching him how to be him. So I'm sitting there watching, and my father's a, a, a hairdresser, and De Niro's asking my father how to do a dye job in one of the scenes. And I'm, I'm just sitting there going, this is, this is amazing. I never thought I'd see my 78-year-old father teach an 80-year-old De Niro how to do a blowout. So... Uh, yeah, working with Robert De Niro was. It, but listen, it wasn't one of these movies where, uh, you know, they yell cut and me and De Niro are talking about where we're going to go at night. Your separate places. Yeah, he went to his chair to open up a Nobu. <laughs> and I went to my chair to oh, study. So there wasn't life. like so, but you had to be nervous, scared, performing in front of him, right? No, like, I was sweating, constantly sweating, uh, because you know, I mean, this is arguably one of the greatest actors of our time. I generally don't do a lot of acting, and now from soup to nuts, I'm working with De Niro for nine weeks in Alabama. So, uh, it, it, what are we pointing at? What's going on over here? What's no, going because I have a question. That he wants Next to get question. in. That's he, all, he, that's we did all. a whole show yesterday. He never spoke. You. He just yeah. jumped into the pool. I think all of us are just stunned. <laughs> Roy wishes to speak. Roy Please. has a question. <laughs> that's why it stopped everything in, the t in our Please. track. Roy, Roy is stopping everything. You never, you never speak? You never speak. Ask. Well, with, with the Irishman, it wasn't just De Niro. It was De Niro and Pacino on the same scene. What was that like? So, yeah, the, that was a whole other... You know, De Niro, um, uh, Pesci, Scorsese, and Pacino, and and this was one. This is before about my father. So, in that one, I was. This is what happened. They yell, "Cut!" Scorsese, Pesci, and De Niro come out. They get in a circle. They start talking, and I'm not invited. <laughs> so I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking I'm getting fired. 
this is after the first scene. I'm like, that's it. I got to pack my bag and go home. Should I get in this circle? Should I stay over here? So I guess, you know, they have a shorthand with the with one another, and they you know, talk about the scene, and then we fired it back up again. But, yeah, uh, you know, to, to be in two movies like that, and because I really don't do a lot of movies, uh, was... I don't want to say a dream come true because I had never even dreamt it. Well, but hold on a second. On dream come true, because I ask you specifically, pick one. You can only pick one. Madison Square Garden five times or that because because that I can't imagine. You didn't weep anywhere with gratitude anywhere inside of that because you were selling out at the height of your dreams this place five times. I got to tell you, I'm constantly weeping. <laughs> constantly crying. Uh, I'd have to say Madison Square Garden. Same no two, bro. Because <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm all up for a good cry. My wife don't cry at all. We'll be watching a movie, and I'm drowning in my own tears. I look over at her, and I'm like, nothing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I go stand up Madison Square Garden because that's what I do. I mean, I'm, I'm a comedian, uh, and, and to, do, to do Madison Square Garden five times in a row coming up here in September is going to be pretty monumental for me. And can you explain to us what that's like for you, just emotionally? That, as the performer and you, given whatever it is that you actually dream this would look like one day, because I don't know, I don't think anybody understands how hard a grind with, with not a lot of health insurance. Like, you're there, it's your art, it's you, and you've got to survive, make a living for your kids on your funny with the expectation of funny. That's hard and brave. You know what? You sound like my mother with the health insurance. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was her biggest concern. As soon as I got into this business in 1998, what are you going to do for health insurance? <laughs> because, you know, you're on your own out there. But I didn't enjoy Madison Square Garden the first time I did the four shows. And I really kicked my, myself for that because I was always thinking about, okay, what's next? What's next? And if you learn anything today, uh, enjoy the moment you are in right now. Don't be looking... You know, six hours from now when you're losing your life savings at the blackjack table. So <laughs> this time around, I'm going to be more in the moment, enjoying it, because sometimes I think ahead of myself and I lose what's actually happening right now. Okay, so a lot of times people come over here and your job is to just do the promotion of whatever it is you're selling. But why do you believe in Bookie on Max? Like, that's, that's an interesting project for you to take. It could just be your sports roots or that there's a lot of funny there. But you you know, I'm imagining you're spending a lot of time creatively there. Yeah, so uh, I, I went up to Chuck Lorre um, and I pitched him a show loosely based around my life. He came back and said, I got an idea about you being a, a bookie in Los Angeles with the pending doom of legalized gambling on the horizon. And I was like, you know what? I like that idea better because I'm kind of tired of playing myself. I did it in the movie about my father. I shot a pilot with Tony Danza as my father six years ago, never got picked up playing me. I'm like, I like this idea of playing another guy. I don't really have a lot of sports roots. I mean, I, I grew up a Chicago Bears fan, but it's not like I'm the guy that you're going to ask who should the Bears take in the draft? I don't even know who's on the list. So, Damn, I was going to ask you that, man. <laughs> well, I got this, this quarterback out of USC. The problem with the Bears, right? Oh, uh, Williams. Yeah. I know that much. Caleb. I know uh, yeah. Junior, uh, Harrison Junior, and, and that's about after that I fall off a cliff. <laughs> but whoever the Bears take, you know, they're doomed. Uh, <laughs> that's true. Th th Justin Fields will leave the Bears and he'll go win a Super Bowl. That's right. I just see the. You know sports. You know sports. Okay, I know a little bit, just a little bit. But I'm just tired of watching the Bears game because I'm watching all these other teams, even Mahomes, and I don't. I've never seen this move before. Mahomes goes up. First they go in the shotgun, and then they got to come up to the line <laughs> and see what's going on. Yes. But the running back comes up too, like he's yes. like he feels left it's out. Perform it's performative. What's, yes. what's no, going you got on? It right. Okay, yes. and then they go back no. together. Bears ain't doing that. <laughs> right? That is the good analysis. So Mahomes figured it out from Brady. Go over there and sprinkle your dust over there. I know we know more, but he's not doing it. You think he's not doing anything? I, he must be doing something because a lot's happening after that. But I'm just saying, when the Bears get up to the line, no one's talking. You know, like, the, <laughs> no one's pointing. This guy's coming, watch. They're just head down, can't wait to go out to eat tonight. I mean, I, 
I don't know. It's the way I'm looking at the Chicago <laughs> No, it's Bears good analysis. Right it's better. Look, Media Row, I don't know. You got to tell us how you experienced this yesterday because it is really a carnival of carnivores coming over and just be funny, funny man. Be funny. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing sports, Vegas, gambling, all of it being together at the same time in your city. Is that an epicenter for your funny here in the residency that you're doing? Because you're in Vegas during a, an insane week. I can't believe that they're about to play amid the gambling, the prostitution, that the conservative NFL is playing around, uh, you know, Sin City. This is my pitch. This is my pitch, and I want to get the audience reaction on this. I say we do the Super Bowl, and we alternate Vegas and SoFi in L.A. every year. The hell with the rest of the league. <laughs> What a perfect place. Go to the pool. <laughs> Go to the pool. You are a distraction with your <laughs> sign. Oh, another sign. He dropped the like ball. This is a good interview. <laughs> this is a good interview. You can't come here and have 10 jokes hoping to get one of them on. He was it's cooking, dirty. and you dropped it's the dirty. signs at the worst it's possible dirty. time. It's dirty. Have some respect. Some dignity for comedy. You yeah. just interrupted his set. No, 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 no. It's not an interruption. We get this type of behavior a lot at the shows, okay? <laughs> Anytime you bring a live audience in, you're bound to get some guy who spent, I don't know, an hour and a half making <laughs> some. <laughs> Three, with a marker. I mean, come on. You brought he that in the cab? An hour and uh, half on those sides. That's that thick marker, too, dude. Come on. Yeah, that's a thick, that's a that's a heavy, heavy marker. Next time you do a sign, put a little color into it. Take some time. Maybe draw a figurine. Uh, it's all right. We'll get to you, guy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Jeez. <laughs> What do you make, uh, and I ask this question of comedians a lot, it's such a fascinating time in comedy. Shane Gillis is now being used by Bud Light at the end of the month as comedians try to find this free speech space. Your, one, your podcast is one of the hundred that are kicking ass because comedians have found this lane for business where they can talk unfiltered to their audience without any limit. As you hustle against the Rogans and the Burt Kreischers and everyone in the competitive game, how are you staying ahead of everybody in the business because you're just likable and people want to hear what you have to say about things? That's nice uh, for you to say that. What I've done, and this wasn't really by design, I've always been kind of, even in high school, I was never part of the popular group. I was always on the fringe, right? Same thing with my career. I'm not really piped into all that's going on in comedy and comedians and hanging out and whatnot. So I've always taken the, just concentrate on myself. I can't worry about anybody else. The only thing I have is me and my material. So I've just constantly wrote material and, 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 and yeah, I have my podcast. And nowadays, you know, with everybody being so sensitive and whatnot, I do have a bit of an editing mechanism, even while I'm up here, right? I'm not one of these guys that's a loose cannon, and I'm going to say something that, that's going to go viral, and I'm going to be popular for that. I just, I just concentrate on just... So you can avoid big. all of the danger spots by not get. That's the hardest way to do it in comedy, right? You're not getting currency or attention just from being provocative for the sake of provoking. Yeah, I can't do that. I just, I just can't do that. My, my comedy is more observational. It's not like shock, and I'm going to shock you with something or, or do something outrageous where people are going to go, oh my God, did you see da-da-da? Yeah. I just try and concentrate on... Whatever my father's doing at the time, <laughs> and bringing that to the stage because same. Because, yeah. because oh, the, the the fathers are are great for material. Uh, well, I mean, especially him. I mean, we just went. Uh, I was in Chicago four or five nights ago, and he and he, he wanted to go and get a refrigerator. And I don't like shopping with my dad because we go into a major department store. And, you know, he's there for eight hours going, uh, where's the coils on the refrigerator? <laughs> coils? <laughs> he wanted to clean the coil. He was going to clean. I go, Dad, your basement looks like Bin Laden lived there. And you're going you're gonna to clean coils on the refrigerator? So, you know, we get to the point where we got to look for, uh, you know, the price. And he's, all right, let, let's go make a deal. And I'm like, Dad, this is not a, it's not a flea market in Palermo. So it's like they got a set price. So whatever my dad's doing, and people go, oh, you don't talk about politics, this, that. I go, whatever my dad is doing at the current time is funnier than what uh, Trump or, or uh, the hell is the guy's name that we got in office now? Biden. 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 Uh, <laughs> Super Bowl week, Dano. Like <laughs> like that's him. the tequila. Roomba. Um, so, yeah, my dad's funnier than both of them. Uh, we have to get out of here. Not enough time. Just on the way out, though, as, a, as someone who loves the craft of stand-up comedy, when you look at, like, the Mount Rushmore 
of the people who do like the real Ooh. sculpting and you, oh. you really like. Oh, Mount Rushmore. <laughs> the, the people who love, you love the craft of it. If I, if I made you pick four, could you possibly limit it to four? Uh, yeah, I, I, I say Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, two of the guys I grew up on. George Carlin. Put yourself on there. And uh, Put yourself and, on there. Oh, no, no, no. John, Johnny Carson. I think Johnny Carson, although it wasn't a like comedian, in a sense that he was, you know, he was a host more than a comedian. But his comedy, silence, which you don't see a lot anymore. You don't see a lot of, uh, si silence is golden in comedy. A lot of people that do comedy is very, like, rushed and they don't give you any breathing space. If you watch Carson, he definitely did that. So that's my top four. When you said Mount Rushmore, I got nervous because I had to go in my brain and go, is that four or five? <laughs> <That's good. laughs> or you had to name presidents, which didn't work out for you just like five seconds I prior. Could, I, I couldn't even name the president. <laughs> Thanks to God. Uh, oh. Again, residency at the Encore Theater at the Wynn. Thank you. He's one of the, the best, best doing it. One Thanks, of the best guys. doing it. Appreciate it. The Dan Libertard Show with Sue Gotts is presented by 1-800-Flowers.com, DraftKings' official flowers for Valentine's. I can't believe what only these people right here are going to get in person for the first time ever in a fashion that stuns me. Free drinks in Vegas. Drinks. <laughs> That's the historic thing that we're going to do? No. Buddy, Thank we don't even you get free Dan. drinks. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. No, really. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> this, I can't believe this. Billy told me, Billy told me in the cabana, and I was thrilled because I have found it so glorious to see my friend here happier than I've ever seen him on these videos yeah. as, a, as a crooner, as a, a Vegas act who can now say he's played Vegas mu musically, yeah. the, the singing sports writer. How about that? How about that? Billy tells me that we have, for this live studio audience, it's not for anybody at home, you're the only ones who get this, at first time ever, a live back in my day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's I other than it. the grammar C. Yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> it, it's a Friday. Yeah, but Pacific yeah, time, yeah. Mike. You know what? It the time with the time zone change, it's like a Tuesday is a Friday. That's not how that works. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well they don't have yeah. clocks. Yeah. They don't have clocks Tuesday. in Vegas yeah. casinos yeah. to disorient. That's you. true. So yeah. it, it, it's a rare Friday that feels like a Tuesday. Correct. Yeah. That's <laughs> you it. get it. That's why we're here. What is, right. the, what is the subject matter? That's Vegas. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Right? And now oh, right it now? is time wow. to take a trip <laughs> down memory lane. Wow. Here's your guy. Shut Red up, Cody. the imaging split. Oh. Back in my day. <laughs> Vegas! <laughs> I'm going to say it point blank. The old Vegas was better. Oh, oh, oh. This oh, used to be an exotic destination with a real mystique because it was the only place in America to legally bet on sports. You felt a little naughty coming here. Daring. I preferred the sad Vegas. I don't need the Bellagio dancing fountains or the sphere with its immersive entertainment. Don't need the Super Bowl or all the sports teams here now. Don't need the gaudy Wynn Casino or an Adele residency at Caesars or a hotel that looks like a Dorito chip or a Venetian gondola ride. I want to ride back to the Vegas of yore when Frank and Dean and Sammy played the smoke-filled Coba room at the Sands. Frank under a sharp creased fedora, Dino with a scotch in one paw and a lit cigarette in the other. Sammy snapping his fingers even when there was no music. I want the derelict splendor of the castaways, the dunes and the Riviera. I want an all-you-can-eat buffet for $3.95. Diverticulitis yes. be damned. Yes. My own trio, the Hee Haw 3. We played Vegas concurrent with the Rat Pack, but we weren't as big. We were the Zagak Pack, but we had our following. We invented the Vegas residency back then. We did a two-week run at the old Howard Johnson Motor Lodge and Casino off Old Fremont. 
Even bigger than that, we were the opening act for a while for Saul Anka, Paul's bitter older brother. I walked that Vegas back, the old Vegas with the wood-paneled room where octogenarian women in Dolly Parton wigs swooned to a 960-pound Elvis impersonator who never left his Barco lounger. Breathe. Yes, yes, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, look, hold on, hold on. This is Oxygen halftime, halftime of the back of my day. Thank you. Okay. That was... I was legitimately okay. scared there no, for a second. Yeah, look. <laughs> um, you, that's a long time to be alone at a microphone reading. Thank and you, you. were doing it very well. <laughs> Let's take a break. Your stamina, your writing is excellent. Let's slow it down. <sighs> slow it down so that we can enjoy every word of this. No one's ever gotten this. You are the first. Like, let's go. Carry him home. Oh. Carry him home. Thank you. On the West Coast, most assuredly. <laughs> On a Friday. Okay. <laughs> like a Tuesday. I want the old school slot machines where all you needed was three sevens or cherries and you didn't push a button. You had tactile involvement. Yes. Pulling the black ball knob down so that it felt like you were losing money slower. <laughs> the drive through chapels. Now that's an old Vegas fixture that's still around because nothing conveys you're serious about your commitment like a quickie wedding ceremony played for laughs. Speaking of marriage, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas used to be true. It was the adulterer's capital. A man could bring his second family here. I never had a problem. That was before smartphones made what? every guy two tables over a potential blackmail photographer. Bring back old sad yes, Vegas. Yes. Bring back the Copa room at the Sands. Eschew the slots button for the black knob and get rid of smartphones and give me back my privacy. I'm Greg Cody and that's how it was back in my day. Pride of a lion, folks. Oh, what a pot! Boy. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Thank you all. Thank you, Greg. I love you all. Thank you. I lost my voice. <laughs> Who needs me? Okay. It's I, am, <laughs> I am pretty sure, I am pretty sure that <laughs> Greg Cody thinks he now has a future career in Vegas as a crooner and writing entertainer <laughs> and an act that can do many things. I'll tell you what. The pri Thank you for bringing up the pride of a lion. That's not what I he did. Bring oh, it oh, he didn't. Yeah, okay, yeah. because you know this book, it's cheaper than Sugatz's book. It has a cover. Yeah, you got that right. It it's has been a cover. Written. It's, it's been written. written by an actual writer. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, Kwasi the lion writes better than Sugatz does, and that, you know, so I don't know nothing. I love you, Sugatz, but you know, this is an actual book. Please go out and buy it because Whoa. Ron McGill needs the money. Okay. <laughs> I, that I, new need, I need some help from the group. This might not be the best time to do it. Why is the guy with the sign back? I love that guy. He doesn't even yes. have the McGill sign up right yes. now. Yes. How do we expel him? Don't, don't no, put them up. No, no, no you're, you're, you're ruining so many shots. You know. Yes. Like, guys, yes, why, what a wonderful sign. Keep, look, we got to do better as a crowd. This person can't just keep getting back into good position. It's like, a beautifully he, crafted sign. There needs sign. to be a punishment. But the, the thing that I wanted to sink into for a second... <laughs> is that I'm pretty sure I now have beef with Wu-Tang. Oh, boy. Woof. Well, you're, you're talking to a member here, so you can... Yeah, yes. honorary member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm waiting for those Wu-Tang honorary member residual checks okay. to start showing up. Okay, can we relive for a second? Just, I, I really suffered sure this. You want Do we to? have yes. to? <laughs> yes. Well, here's why. It this was going so well. I know. Well, because there were two things that happened after the bad thing that happened that embarrassed me that makes me think it is now elevated to beef. Mm. So I'm, I, it was the interview I was scared of for seven days because I'm told they may or may not come, all seven of them, and then six of them arrive, but I've had memorized who the seven are, and I don't know a couple of them, and mathematics isn't, an, an, he's not a member of Wu-Tang, but he'll also be there. And then... We start the interview and I ask you God a question without realizing that you God is not there. Woof. Yeah, that was I, tough. That was tough to bounce back from. That's right. And you well, took I, it like a champ. I didn't too. bounce back from it. No, you didn't. I, I did not. I no. sank into my you, chair. I and got then you called afraid. Lucy Iowa. Yes, yeah, she you did. Yeah, you totally forgot my name. I, I accused. <laughs> 
Wayne Newton. Wayne, Newton. Wayne, Newton. Wayne Newton of having a surgically altered <laughs> that face. That was great, too. Whoa. Uh, left field, too. No, you didn't accuse oh, him. You. <laughs> you said I accused him of that. <laughs> Mike says he clearly dyes his hair, and then Dan goes, you know what, right? Mike, you're right. He does do work on his face. You called him a compiler and he's also. he's 81 and he looks great. <laughs> he did do that, Billy, you're great. right. That was crazy. Wayne was waiting right here. That was Billy, though, wasn't it? Someone said compiler right yeah, before no, Wayne. No, no, that, that was Billy. Here. That was this no, guy so over we here. Say Wayne, said it so we, got, we probably have beef with Wayne, too, now that I think about it. Because he comes up on stage and I say 165 albums and Billy says compiler. <laughs> Privately in our headsets. Uh, 50,000 shows. Are but so on. understand, so Land the plane. I'm told Ghostface is coming, but I don't think Ghostface was there. I have uh, Raekwon's photo, but he has a beard, and it doesn't look like I, I remember these guys from 30 years ago. And so after we've had this shame, I feel terrible. One of the members of Wu-Tang comes up to me, shakes my hand, and says, what's my name? Whoa. Wow. Oh, my. <laughs> We've done the interview. Now, you got to keep in mind, I couldn't hear what they were saying. We had tech issues. I didn't hear the first hour and 15 minutes of yesterday's Excuses. Show. It really does. It sounds like you're cracking up the excuse machine. Well, yeah, no, of course I am. But again, I'm now shaking hands with a member of Wu-Tang. I've disrespected both you, God, and all of them because I can't tell you got apart from Masta. You got it wrong. That's, that's the killer. That's correct. And, and he <laughs> says to me, what's my name? And I'm sitting in the handshake, and oh he boy. lets the silence sit there for 10 seconds. And, oh. and what do you do if you're me there? Like, what? Turn around and run. I don't run. know his name. <laughs> you hit him with your dad, eh? <laughs> the poppy, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Dan, I feel like you're just leaning, like, you know your name. And then you hit him in the back, and you keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there you, you go. Are. What do I need to tell <laughs> you? Or you go, a man who needs no introduction. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> the Hawkeyes. <laughs> so he says Capadonna to me. Oh. I should have known that. He wasn't on the list. He wasn't any of the seven names I had memorized. It was a surprise entrant <laughs> in the uh, Wu uh, Royal right, Rumble. But you God was not there. <laughs> You're already rattled. I mean. I'm, I'm falling apart because I was supposed to come out with a joke and my mic didn't work. Oh. Method Man had a tube of toothpaste in his hand. <laughs> that was weird. It was crazy because Dan, we did the Dan walkout with the mic working 42 <laughs> times the day before. It was the only thing we rehearsed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so I come out to a big circus show, the biggest we've ever done. And the first step out of the gate is mic doesn't work. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny. That's always the only part that the microphone catches. My mic's not working. <laughs> it would be a great time while you say that for the mic to actually not be working. But no, we caught that part when it was abundantly clear that it wasn't working. But just to reinforce it, the I, only thing that you hear pristine audio-wise is Dan saying, this isn't I, working. My question <laughs> to you all, all you, I've got this right. I'm not, not interpreting the language correctly. What's my name is a question begins beef, does it not? Yeah. It does. Well, if he's if he's gonna make me sit in it, and I'm I don't know your name. <laughs> I think the polite answer is I'm not gonna take a quiz. <laughs> that is your move. That's his move. <laughs> this is but anytime I ask my dad who any baseball player is, this he's just like I'm not taking a quiz. Unless he knows the answer, then he will take a quiz. Now you have your way out, dude. Right. <laughs> What have you observed from your father this week? Because it has made me truly joyous to see you see him this happy. It's the happiest I've ever seen, a mentor and friend, because he gets to perform these cheesy acts in Vegas. He's been Jesus. living out, you've been living out a Jesus. dream. Have you not? This has been a dream come true for you this week. You know it, it legitimately has been cool for me. I know we're going to do the zany stuff, but it's been super, all of this has been super cool this week, hanging out with all the crew. And what's happening right now? This is uh, emotional. Felt, never mind. Thank you, Dan. Oh, platitude. Yeah, Dan, you're better at this than I am. I started feeling something in my stomach, and I was like, what is that feeling? Crocodile tears. This is me I think it's the tequila shots game. I had with this steak sauce last night. Let's, Let's shake out of this. Purr for Purdy. <laughs> Are those feelings that I started getting there? That was weird, dude. I just had a moment. It's all right. There's going to be Tums people here later. We'll oh, get you hooked oh, up. Oh, God, I love some Tums. Oh, There's going to be Bloody Mary people here later as well. Oh. Um, you know, this week, this week, this week, it feels like a week in Vegas because, you know, I haven't lost any money yet. Listen, 
Uh, this has been really special. I've done a lot in my life. I have to say, I've written the book, The Pride of a Lion, with Ron oh, McGill about is. Kawasi growing up at Zoo Miami. Two I'm books, a, I'm a Two baseball years. Hall of Fame yeah. voter. Uh -huh. I'm an eight-time PFPI champion. You don't take um, quizzes? I'm a league bowler, okay? I'm a league bowler, so I've done a lot in my life. But to be able to say legitimately now that, yeah, I performed live in Vegas, it's just a thrill. You know, it is. I, I'm not even. I'm not even being facetious. Like I'm not even playing that for a laugh. It's, it's, it's cool. You know, it, it's a cheap thrill. So uh, thank thank you all for making it happen. A very you guys are the greatest. thrill, really. You guys, these fans, your your show fans are the greatest. I spoke to a lot of you yesterday after the show. Some of the stories you guys tell about how much this show means to you. It really, you know, I, I got emotional several times talking to a lot of you, and I'm not even lying. It's, it's, you guys are special, and we appreciate you. Thank you. I didn't get that. They just yelled foot at me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just had heaters with me. <laughs> it's uncomfortable to be in that emotional skin, showing gratitude for people who would. I didn't I like it. I yeah, it was a little, it was a little, we'll uh, yeah. Talk to all of you when this is over, <laughs> and hopefully I get to hear your stories, but... Uh, Try to keep them under 30 seconds, though. No, that never no. happens. Okay. It is. Yeah. Ask Dan. I'm just kidding. Yeah, 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 Dan's got to keep it under 30 seconds. Go up and talk to him. Right. Yeah. Dan's got a long line, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, keep, uh, make it quick, it, people. I, I'll tell you why it's a long line, and I hope to, to shake all of your hands and take pictures with you. Uh, I do not take for granted that many of you fly in from places in this streaming economy when you can have any entertainment, because you'd catch us wherever we go. <laughs> And not everybody gets that. And so we're happy to perform for you, even though this is wildly uncomfortable for me. And many of you will also tell me from this most intimate of space that we brought you through a dark time. And you now do that for me, who has lost his brother and needs the laughter here so that I can feel better about the silliness that we do every day. So thank you, genuinely. The Dan Lebitard Show with Stu Gatz is presented by DiGiorno. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Are we going to do Super Bowl predictions today? Oh, we are, yep. Because it's yeah, Friday, and we did I mean, the thing. We Mike's broke. frustrated we haven't talked about the game enough. We'll get to the game. I have my top five Vegas acts, if anyone's interested here. Oh, that's, yes. that's a way to cut through the emotion. Thank you. <laughs> OLI, Mike. Cheating. <laughs> oh, well, I should be Dan acting like he knew the names of the members of the Wu-Tang Clan yesterday. <laughs> Number five. Cheating. Dead and Company. <laughs> Number four. Snorting cocaine. Number three. The Act of Adultery. It's the same as cheating. Oh, there's no, there's different types we of cheating. We went over Dan. this. Like, Number two, Terry Fader and Winston. <laughs> it's the cheating and adultery. Or the and number one, Greg Coat and the Hee Haw Three. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, ahead of Wayne Newton. That's terrific. <laughs> Thank you so much. Does well anyone learned, have any good know. Greg Cody <laughs> stories from the week uh, before we get out of here with him, before he leaves? We were at a bar last night. Mike was doing a DJ set, and he, uh, he and Yeti had to leave because Greg had to get home early because he needed to rest his voice. Well, Yeti told Greg, <laughs> we're leaving right now. You need to protect your voice. Somehow they didn't care about Jeremy. They were like, Jeremy, you can stay. Right. So we were walking back uh, on Fremont under the, what's that big thing on, uh, everything's lit up, it's like a <laughs> cavalcade, what's that called? You'll find the it. feature at Fremont. Yeah, that thing. LED. And those three uh, guys in the pool earlier today without the shirts, like the buff guys that you guys yeah. were referring to, <laughs> those, I swear, are the three half-naked cowboys on Fremont, those guys back there today. Is, is any, am I right? <laughs> Did anybody see those? They're the same guys, right? <laughs> They're the same guys. Okay, I just wanted to give them Two props. people put their thumb up. Like, I don't yeah. think that that's any kind of confirmation. Yeah, Appreciate no, there's crazy support. people on that promenade. Are there's the nuns a, here, too? I was asking for the best stories from Greg Cody. There's a topless nun. We're getting there. A We're getting there. A ton. Yeah, okay, a are there any nun. good Greg Cody stories not told by Greg Cody about Greg Cody <laughs> yeah. before we get him out of here? I oh, have okay. a couple, but I'm not telling them. <laughs> Baby! That's yeah, my that guy. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? 
We don't. No, I'm quiet. You know what? I hadn't left the hotel until last night. I'm a very quiet man. I'm yes. A, you know, I'm a married man. I don't cheat on my wife, despite that <laughs> gratuitous line in back in that my day. That you wrote. That I wrote. <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, I wish you were here, my wife. I really miss her. <laughs> no, I don't. That's the thing about my, being married. You know, you're not allowed to say, I don't miss my wife. I've been gone two days. I haven't been gone long enough to miss my wife. I'm sorry. I call her. You I'm on the phone with her for 30 her. seconds. You know, that what am I? Mrs. Hello. Mal. All right. All right. We'll see you. All right. And then, you know, I'm going to see her in two days. I was jumping Charlie. Good. And that's it. <laughs> That kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. That kind of thing. So you miss her or you don't miss her? I, Make you up have your mind. To oh, I miss you. You know, I wish you were here. You know, but no. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, no. I've been married for like 40 years, 43 years. Why? I'm allowed to be away from my wife. And you know what? She doesn't miss me. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. It's a break for her. She's on vacation without me there. Are you kidding me? And you know it, baby, and you know it. And you know it, baby, and you know it. And you know it, baby, and you know it. That kind of thing, baby. That kind of thing, and you know it. It just doesn't go as well, that kind of thing, champ. You did it. I know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Carrot Top, <laughs> next. <laughs> Start spreading the news. NFC and day. Offensive players of the week in New York, New York. DeVito, he rules. Wilson's making plays. The Mormon and Italian in New York, New York. Zach Wilson soaking with a mom, just the tip. Tommy DeVito's the man, forget about it. These offensive lines. Protecting all day. They'll actually get some passes off in old New York. If they can make it there, they'll make it anywhere. Gabagool, New York, New York. Thank you. Let's give it up for Juju Gotti. Salute to my dog, Jeremy Tache, dog. I love you, brother. Also, give it up for Yeti Blanc, man. That boy be putting in work for these songs, brother. Gabagool, New York, New York, goddammit. We got some more trivia to get to. But first, before we do that, all of y'all head over to the Tom's Owner Lounge. The Tom to Tom Tom. Tom's over here with my dog, Lucy. Look at her. Fresh your hair. Give Lucy a round of applause. You know what I mean? They're going to be open today from, uh, what, the, at the Bikes Casino from 12 noon to 6 p.m. today. They could have sent me this a long time ago. They just sent it to me, so I'm reading it off my phone. You'll be able to play free games and win exclusive prizes, even sample. Whoa, everyone. Y'all ain't got to sample nobody's tastes if y'all don't want to. But check out my sister Lucy and come over here ASAP, man. Check her out. They're going to be here from 12 to 6. You did me. Now the first concession. You did. What's your name, my sister with the bubble coat? Hey, you talking about? Catherine. Catherine, where are you from? Seattle. Your breath don't stink. Hey, I got a couple questions for you to test your knowledge of the show, ma'am. Anything you want to get off your chest while you're up here? Kyle, love you. Hey, Kyle. Mystery Crate. Huh? Mystery Crate every Friday. Every Friday, you did with Mike Fuentes right here in the orange hat. You dig it. All right. What color is Billy's favorite hoodie? Yeah, dirty as hell, too. It's musty, too, if you smell on it. Gray? Gray? Gray. Ah, uh, incorrect. You feel me? What's the correct answer, big dog? It's red. We're going to give you another chance to redeem yourself. 
redeem yourself. Hey, talking about <laughs> Stugatz is always there, but also never there. A riddle for her ass. There's no truth. There ain't no damn truth. It's a call of a lacrosse mitts for, ladies and gentlemen. She two strikes in. Do not strike out, ma'am. At least file tip this off to the side. What? Oh, now I ain't gonna give you that one. What animal is Ron McGill's favorite animal? Security, get his ass up out of here. What is it, a cougar shirt? My boy got on some. Oh, don't do that. I don't sketch. All right. An eagle. It's a harpy eagle. We have no losers here. You still win the prize. Salute to you, ladies. Give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Please give her a round of applause because she got all her questions wrong. <laughs> you did. Salute to my dog. What's up, my brother? Hey. How are we doing? What's your name, brother? David Lou. David Lou, who you want to shout out today? I shout out Brooke and the circuit team. You got to know, bro. You got to know you shout out the circuit team. Much love everywhere where you go. You got to know it. So I got a question for you. What celebrity do we always call when asking Dan's favorite color? Tim Kirkchen? Absolutely not. Scrite one down. Do anybody of y'all watch this show? <laughs> <laughs> Rick Springfield. God damn it. I got another one. What is Roy's favorite response on Twitter? Yo mama. Hey, salute to my dog Roy. You did. The hockey show is popping right now. Him and David Dork. All right, it. Name three of Jessica Montana's favorite teams. Bears. Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame what? Fighting Irish. Hey, so, hold on, security. Get this mother. I'm finna kick your ass. Get him out of here. It ain't no cheating over here, man. And the Clemson Tigers. You got them right, brother. Yes. Give him, give this man a round of applause. Man, get the hell up out of here, man. Appreciate your time, brothers. Salute, brother. Yes, sir. We got any more contestants? We ain't got no more damn contestants. So I'm gonna thank all y'all myself. I appreciate all y'all for your time and your energy. Dan appreciates you more than anything. He tell it all of us too damn much. But y'all, thank you so much, man. Back to the show. The Dan Libertard Show with Stu Gatz is brought to you by Bayer Aspirin, the official sponsor of Fans Hearts. Carrot top, 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 carrot a Vegas that got, it got me a little a little boner right there actually that was nice a, thank a you for boner. that we no begin with the boner <laughs> loner no from said, here uh, Car carrot top is a legitimate uh, Las Vegas legend he is pre he's performing six days a week here for 25 years for 25 yeah. years 29 29 29, 29. Oh, that's a fine and he God signed he signed through 2030. How, how many acts have there been in Vegas more long-running than yours? I don't know. I know Penn and Teller have been long, but only one talks, so that doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count. He just stand. That's a good gig, right? He just stand there, do nothing. Just show up, dress up. Yeah. I come here, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stugatsbooks.com, everyone. Thank you. $29.99. <laughs> The Luxor Hotel is where you've been. You've seen Vegas change a yes, lot. Yes, yes. Uh, but I don't want to ask you about that. What oh. I want to do is condemn you. Condemn you. I had a great. I had a great. I had a great comeback for that one. Not too late now. You didn't want to ask me. <laughs> See, I've seen the growth. I've seen the growth of Vegas. You know, when you go to check in your room. They say your your room's not ready. They said you you cleaning it. They said no, we're building it. See, that would have been a great comeback if you'd set it up right. It's all ready for really it. Really, You're more mad at me. Right. This is the last <laughs> interview you, I'm done. This, this is what I'm mad about. I'm going to share an intimacy with the audience here and, and a little bit of a betrayal, okay? This is my friend. I love him. He's uh, wildly talented. You should see his show. He is a whore. 
who has given the best of his comedy to 70 radio stations around the world on Radio Row the last two days, and what we get is the broken remains of the prostitute <laughs> who has no voice left no and voice comes yet. and gives me the crumbs of his comedy because he's too busy talking to Minnesota. Well, it was big. It was ESPN. It was all these big stations, you know. How do you say no to that? <laughs> Boo! God damn! <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, I love you. You know, I love you. I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, it was fun. No, it was fun. I've been looking for a ticket too. I don't have a ticket for the f game, so I've been trying to get a ticket. So you were doing 70 right, interviews. This is my last, my last, <laughs> my last attempt to get You're a ticket. You're hoping we have you one think for we you. We have one. I do, I, you, you do have one. No, well, oh. if, I, if I may explain I here, yeah, like, okay. just so that you know what this person is in Vegas. Many years ago, uh, Guns N' Roses was opening some giant thing here, and we did not, he did not have any tickets, and he said his ID was his face. And then we pulled in to the biggest show in town, and he parked where he wanted to and went everywhere with his face. <laughs> And now he can't get a Super Bowl ticket because Las Vegas has gotten so big that he can't even get in the room with the NFL because they don't respect Vegas the way they need to. I should probably call Guns N' Roses and see if they can get me into them. <laughs> so I got into Guns N' Roses. That was it. I took you with me. You haven't gotten tickets. How can you not get tickets in this city? I don't know. People ask this is a mysterious question. I don't know. But I'm trying, right? I, I mean, I, I was going to ask the commissioner yesterday, but I thought that was odd, you know. He was like, how are you? I was like, I need a ticket. It's gonna, you know, kind so of you're a, not going to get into the game. I'm, I'm a whore, but not that kind of a whore. Vegas is going to come into your city, and you, a Vegas legend, isn't yeah. going to be able to get into the game. I might yet. It's not, yet. it's not over yet. We have another day. <laughs> but it disrespects you. There are some shows that have viewerships that are probably, that have, you know, that not, I'm not talking about you. Some of the ones that I've done that, that are working on it. We got, a, we got a couple people working on it. It disrespects you to not get you a ticket, does it and not? It, yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> It's very sad right now. I know. I'm very sad. I am broken. I have no voice left, and this is it. What have you In been a freezing, doing? By a freezing pool. This is a great gig, by the way. All the others were inside the with heat, and they, oh, they're bringing you tea and cookies. We're trying to do it different than Radio <laughs> Row. We're trying to do it with Carrot Top, and then I find out well, well, he's, he's already been having sex with Radio <laughs> Row for two days. Yeah. He's just fucking nasty Nestor. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. coming over here, for, and then he comes and gives me the crumbs of this. <laughs> yeah, but they're good crumbs. They're good crumbs. They're good crumbs. <laughs> I love the crumbs of, like, a chip bag when you, like, tilt yeah. that oh, thing the back. the best crumbs. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lays. Oh. <laughs> back to you, Dano. What's wrong with having sex with Radio Row, by the way, Garrett? I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, thank you. Was it's it good sex? Me. Huh? Was it good sex? It was great sex. Yeah. I was involved. It was great right. sex. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm great in bed. I come every time. So. <laughs> I'm, that's how I look at it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and I drink smart water. <laughs> Performing at the Luxor. <laughs> Six yeah. out of seven. Now. Along with Wu Tang. With Wu I, miss, I miss Wu Tang, apparently. I miss Wu Tang and uh, Wayne Newton. Why, how would that happen? Um, that's an excellent question. Well, that was question. yesterday. You okay. missed, oh, you I thought it was today. I thought, they, I, that's a, okay. How had it go, by the way? Awkwardly. <laughs> I asked a question of you, God, and uh, you, God, wasn't there. Oh, no. I've done that with. Oh God, I've done that. I called. I called uh, new kids on the block. Uh, uh, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> like right in front of them. I said, "Oh my God, I was trying to get your show tonight." And they said, "What show?" And I said, "You had a show at the at the Mandalay Bay." And they said, "No." And I said, "Yeah, I was going." And they got my my assistants like, "Dude, wrong band." I'm like, oh my God. But they were like, "Cool, man. Yeah, next time." They didn't even correct me. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, next time." See you. Your assistant's name is Jeff. Yeah, he's sitting right down there. He's Jeff. Por porno Jeff. Por 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 Jeff. Porno Jeff. Why is he porno Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> My man, fist me. Hey Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> How was that porno Jeff? <laughs> Jeff. 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 Porno, porno Jeff. Jeff. Why is it, why porno Jeff. 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 Porno, Jeff. Porno, Jeff. Porno. Jeff. Jeff. Porno. Why? Why is he porno, Jeff? Uh, I think he used to work in porn. Oh, but not not, not, not the behind the scenes. <laughs> not yeah. He wasn't. Yeah, he was. He was wrapping up rings and shipping them. He wasn't. He wasn't wearing them. Yeah. Creatively, how <laughs> how is it that you do the same act for thirty years? Comedy uh, changes a lot. You get. Uh, other comedians like to look down on the prop comic who's right, played sure. for thirty years. 
in Vegas, like, and now it's more competitive than ever, younger people, and yes. you're still doing it. How do you do it six out of seven nights a week without your stamina just drying I up? I don't know. I, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun job. I mean, you get, and you get, there's so much you can, there, every day is a new topic. I mean, you, you can't not come up with new jokes, you know? Trump right into Trump. It's red. Both teams are red. How do you, both teams are red. I made red. No one made red. This is this is Trump with a cold, by the way, with no voice. <laughs> Trump, it's better Trump when I have a voice. Been fucking on radio no president had red. Days. I made red. I made water. There was never water before I was president. <laughs> yeah, you just come up with Joe. You know, it's easy. You just you come up with topic and uh, you, you do it. You know, they're gonna put seventy thousand people in the uh, stadium for the Super Bowl. Seventy thousand people with only one usher. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you get how do you do that? See, this is good, oh. man. This is, this is a, a week a, a, week, a joke a for joke. one day. And That's then a good joke. Then you cut that away. Did how many other people got it on Radio Row right, the last huh? two days? Right, right. How many See, times? I've, I've been working on my craft. How many times I got have you made the usher joke working in the last two days? Working on my gigs before I got here. Got it all polished up for you. <laughs> that had to have been like the 36th time he said that joke in the last yeah. 24 hours. Give me a number. Uh, number what? How many times number have you said times that you joke? Made that oh, joke. how many times have I done that that bit? Yes. Oh, this week? Yes. <laughs> last two days. Yes. Well, it's a the week. It's a week days. joke, though. It's only funny for the last two days. So I probably I probably did it seventy times. <laughs> but I executed it really good that time. I really did. The best I've ever done it. But yeah, then yeah, you just throw in a little bit of this. <laughs> you know, ones that are good for this week. You know, topical, and right? Okay. I would love your Trump. For the next three minutes. Okay. <laughs> Just okay. three no, minutes. No, no, stop. I, three minutes. I can do it all day. Oh. I can do it. I am him. I am. Do you have to turn I'm the you other have one? The the it's up. fun to sit forward, though. You got to so sit forward. Your, your idea, as he does his yes. 250th consecutive show, I love is this. just carry the this next is, three minutes. This is a time for you to negotiate, my friend. Yes. Tell him you'll do it for three minutes if he gets you a Super Bowl ticket. Okay. All right. <laughs> Go. All right. Okay. <laughs> three minute routine. Oh, and uh, Dan uh, in Trump, with Trump? If, if, I mean, and somehow, if, if it meets with audience approval, then I have to figure out a way to get you a Super Bowl ticket because you should be in the Super Bowl, but it's got to be like, it, I mean, it's three minutes of improv. You're freestyling. You're, oh, God. You're freestyling on Trump. That's a lot of pressure. I don't even know if you want it. I don't. I, don't I, wouldn't, want I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't I, want I, it. Uh, I can think of a story, but I got to do it by Trump, eh? Got to yeah. do it by Trump. Mm -hmm. I don't, well, what's the deal, Stu? Let's negotiate the terms. Well, for it's three. Well, he gets a Super Bowl ticket on Dan. You have to do Trump for three minutes. Just okay, carry it. I mean, you minutes. guys are running out of time. Yeah, You're already three, three minutes. It's got to be two minutes. Exactly three. I mean... He's worked his, himself <laughs> down to a Pro Bowl ticket at this Ooh, point. Things to ponder. <laughs> Just in case we uh, want it, I have it. So I'm on a plane. I'm on a plane, right? Now, okay, it's hard to do Trump like this. You could do a character. I'm on a plane, and uh, I sit next to this. Uh, this. <laughs> I sit next to this this guy, right? And our plane's delayed, right? It's horrible to do Trump unless you just do that. <laughs> Trump, Trump's only funny for like, and that's Limited it. Limited right? Trump. You know, yeah. This is yeah. such a bad spot. Yeah, we put it. After, <laughs> yeah but after after would think everybody would have Super Bowl's on the line. For that, you know, I, I, made, you know, I made this whole joke. This whole joke was me. So yes. I was at a place. <laughs> Fuck. It's hard to do. It's hard. Um, I was, I was, see, all I was going to talk about was I like pussy. That's what I was going to talk about. <laughs> that was my whole plan to wear this shirt and say I like pussy. And then you were gonna give me a ticket, but um, <laughs> it's harder you now if I can if I can if I can intertwine Wu Tang and Wayne Newton I into feel, the story. No, but it, I feel like if you hadn't been Radio Row for two straight <laughs> days, I would have gotten. <laughs> yeah, but I'm good man, I did. <laughs> I, I would have gotten maximum carrot top, who's not broken by the week, because Vacant has broken you the way that it's broken him. You're done. Yeah, but I think if I got here the first day, I wouldn't have had that that. That big powerful joke about Usher, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have evolved into that beautiful routine. Go see his show at the Luxor. I'm He's going tonight, by the way. I'm going tonight. If anybody wants to go, nice. I, I should and tell the. If anybody the needs a ticket to my show, <laughs> I'll, I'll get you one. I'll get you one. I should tell the audience as well. Uh, the many of you remember, kicked Colin Cowherd's ass I for did. seven straight yeah. weeks. The longest run we had. Best ever.
beaten by Chris Jericho. He had no chance. He had no but chance. seven straight weeks, he beat Colin Cowherd. Carrot Top, thank you, sir. Appreciate yeah, your friendship. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for a beautiful, fun time. <laughs> Carrot Top. Uh, Carrot Top. Carrot Top. Oh. 20 more seconds. Oh. 20 more seconds. Oh. Things to ponder. Oh. Things to ponder. 20 more out. seconds. Oh. 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 Christian Ponder. <laughs> We're, how is the Things to Ponder file already in reruns? <laughs> we'll be back to close things up next. All right. His name is Cooper, good at running curls. But when his hammy got a tear, he saw Puka standing there. His play diminished, hostile takeover. Nakua hopped into the car. McVeigh has maybe found a star. And then Matt Stafford threw him 25 and 2. Oh, there's a brand new kid in town out of BYU. They call him Puka. Puka, Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua. His quarterback is not named Tua. Yeah, yeah he is Puka. Puka. Puka Nakua. Fantasy assassin, it's the time to cash. And yeah, it's Puka. Don't need the glow. Do you like music that helps you reminisce until there's nothing left to reminisce about? Do you like listening to crooning old codgers who only show up to work one day a week? Hey, I resemble that remark. Then you're going to love Greg Cody and the Hee Haw 3. Greatest Hits album. If you love all your melodies with the elegance and flair of the Zagak Pack from the waist up, but with lots of super party hits because you're all Miami from the waist down. Then the Greg Cody and the Hee Haw 3 Greatest Hits album is just for you. With songs that'll make your meme I want to crank on that jukebox like Puka Nakua, Back in My Day, in my King of the Road, Nelly's Diner, and we're wearing pants now, an original Brill Cream jingle. Baby, it's cold outside. Why didn't you tell me? It's Vegas, baby. That kind of thing. And you know it. I love cruises. I used to be a morning man. I've got the Trade Dan Marino Blues. All 370 of these straight-up bangers can be yours for the very low price of... $79.99. Now, why $79.99, Greg? Eh. I figure I'll pay my cable bill. E either way, just send a self-addressed stamp envelope to Greg Cody, care of Chris Cody, care of the Dan Levitard Show, care of Metal Arc Media, Miami, Florida. The first 200 customers get not only Greg Cody and the Hee Haw 3's greatest hits, but also a VHS from my personal collection, including timeless classics such as... Swing Vote, A League of Their Own, Freaky Friday, Remember the Titans, Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off, Justice League, High School Musicals 1, 2, and 3. From Justin to Kelly, The Rookie, The Rookie of the Year, Remember the Titans, and many more. The Dan Lebitard Show with Sue Gotts is presented by 1-800-Flowers.com. DraftKings official flowers for Valentine's. Without getting too aggressively grateful here, I will just tell you that the endeavor of bringing this thing, spaceship up and making it look like this requires the help of a lot of people. Circa, everyone needs to stay here. Everyone needs to stay here. Nobody had a better setup than us in this entire Super Bowl week, and that's ridiculous to say. We're just a sports writer and some Miami nonsense. Uh, Chris Cody wants to thank some people, though, for us well, because he, he's, he felt a feeling earlier. Well, I think I want to thank for the wants first to, time. He wants yeah. to express it. Well, no, I think we've thanked our audience, and we're going to thank you guys afterwards when we talk to you. But we really do need to think, thank our crew here because of, like, what you're seeing here. And there's no time. There's literally dozens and dozens of people, and I mean this sincerely. So we are going to just all turn on our mics, and we're all going to thank them 
start naming names. It's the only way to get all the names said. So on the count of three, we're going to just take five seconds and thank our entire crew, and you guys just appease us, okay? Okay. So this is his worst idea since purring for purring. No, this works. All right. Yeah. One, two, three. Jen. Thank you, Jen. 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 Draft Kings! Draft Kings! Draft Kings! Most importantly... Kings. There, we nailed it. Uh, Jeremy, Thank you, guys. Uh, he mentioned Jeremy, oh, Jeremy. I don't know if I can throw it to Jeremy, but Jeremy is mad at Hee Haw 3. There's a problem. There is beef. Uh, Hee Haw 3 is already in trouble of some sort. Jeremy, thank you for all your work. You never got introduced. You were uh, pantomiming, uh, pantomiming playing instruments earlier. I don't think you were actually playing any of them. You're a very talented person who has been engulfed by this... Uh, this team of people who don't think you're that talented and you're full of yourself. Thank why, you. Why? Uh, That's enough, Jeremy. Why? Uh, why are you beefing with the other members of Hee Haw Three? Well, they're both named Greg, and I feel like um, their Gregdom has been really excluding me. Um, they seem to only want to talk about the Greg Cody show with Greg Cody. They say Greg, Greg, Greg over and over again. We have a certain soloist who only wants to be the center of attention, complaining the music's too loud. We're and not doing the right things to support work. him. My instrument works. I was faking one song. Um, that's okay. We can let everybody behind the curtain. But yeah, it's just a little bit of tension, and I think I might have to go as a solo act, Dan. Oh, okay. Sad. Wow. I, I will do this begrudgingly because Stugat has, uh, and I love him, and I've loved him for 20 years. Uh, he loves this event. I hate this event. The fact that we're out here is a great joy to me to be able to see him dominate Radio Row. And as an honor to him right now, the last nine minutes of this emotional uh, week for us, we are going to talk football. Oh, oh, I can't believe, believe it. I can't Predictions. believe it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the NFL honors were last night. We haven't talked about Lamar Jackson winning the MVP. I mean, Roy was very upset about Lamar Jackson winning the MVP. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm upset because he wasn't unanimous. Oh, Aaron Schatz placed him third Shots on his fired. List. Third. <laughs> Who do you have so first and You second? saw that AFC championship game, and your takeaway was, <laughs> oh, this is easily the best. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, can we talk about this? Is a, this is an amazing football game. Mina was talking yesterday at her live podcast, and I do love the build-up to one big event. It's a pop culture epicenter. You have commercialism, you have media, you got Usher in the middle of all of it, and you've got also a rematch of a previous Super Bowl with two really good teams that have been doubted for totally different reasons, and the line is super tiny. I don't know who's actually going to win it, and every year, I keep thinking it's not going to get any bigger than it was. Remember, Dana White and, and Mark Cuban, everyone said that, that this wasn't going to get bigger than it was, and that was 10 years ago. And somehow, with a little help of a pop star, it's exploded to the biggest it's ever been. Every passing day, pro football in this country and now across the globe, as there's a week one in Brazil with the Philadelphia Eagles, this is immense, but also... It's a really good game, <laughs> and I don't know who wins it. I was. This, I, I, this I, is I, the way oh. I do it, Mike. I will tell you who's going to win this game, okay? Game for your life. Patrick Mahomes or Brock Purdy, because I am not betting against the Chiefs again. I have gone against the Chiefs the entire time. I have been wrong the entire time. For two years, I have been wrong on this Kansas City Chiefs team. I am not going against Patrick Mahomes Wait, again. two years? I, I mean, that, that, that short, Alex bud. Smith take is much older than two for years. For five years, I've been wrong about this Kansas City Chiefs team. Loud wrong. <laughs> Dan, do you have opinions about this football well, game? When you say this, I, I think it's funny what you say when you say, I don't know who's going to win, because as we all know, Mike Ryan knows everything. It must be shocking that he doesn't know, <laughs> that this time he doesn't know who's going to win. Most games I know exactly well, who's going to win. Every Most other things, game outside of this. Well, a lot of the Dolphins uh, games this year, I mean, we kind of knew. Uh, one of the people I should thank before we get out of here, executive producer for many, 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 many years. This is his last show. Thank you, Mike. 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 
Um, I, so, so, but the, to answer your question, because <laughs> Mike I, wants to keep it moving. <laughs> I, I asked this to Mina yesterday. I'm like, because Mina knows more than everybody, but you don't know what's going to happen in a football game. Weird things happen. I expect Brock Purdy and the 49ers to be better than Kansas City, but I fear Patrick Mahomes because you don't bet against that dude. The game, and, the game for your life thing really shook me. Yeah. Because I was leading SF. But right. for all we know about football, we're still in the place, well, I like this quarterback better than that quarterback, even though three weeks ago I kind of thought like he did, there's no way Kansas City wins any football games this postseason. Like, that was three weeks ago. He was having the take of, I want Kansas City in my stadium, and now you're fearing them again. The great ones, the Bradys, that's what they do to you, where you reduce it to his team's not as good, but he beats you anyway. Like, that... To me, that puts more pressure on him than Taylor huh. Swift or anybody else this week. Wait a second. You agree with me? I mean, Jesus. I what mean, we I mean, were all <laughs> doubting Kansas City. Who no, wasn't we doubting Kansas City? Uh, I mean, if we're doing this thing based off of recent form, I can understand why a lot of people and the public are backing Kansas City because it's not every day you make it to the Super Bowl without playing your best football, and San Francisco has not looked good really, for several weeks. And I think everyone's still carrying that Monday night performance uh, with them when they're trying to evaluate these quarterbacks. And now I'm just, oh, I'm gambling again. So I'm in everything. I, I know all about the four-string linebacker for you know Kansas what? City I, now. You don't know what you're talking about, but the Duke Bill Barnwell's does. X-Factor. The, the Duke knows. The, the Duke is the nation's fourth, uh, the no, international. And hey. The, you, what is going to happen in this football game? <laughs> Ooh, predictions. Oh, the Good. Chiefs are going to stomp the 49ers. That a boy. 17 points, yep. at least. <laughs> Sorry, Shanahan's. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Jessica, Lucy, predictions? We're really doing it. We're going around the whole I'm surprised you didn't listen to Mystery Crates this week because we gave our predictions. We we did a – Dan, you you missed out on a lot of good content from Radio Row. We all gave our predictions. Lucy, what was yours? I just hope everyone has a really good time. hope both teams have a lot of fun. I hope we have fun. And I hope Rock Pretty loses just a little bit. What? Iowa State. Can't beat Iowa. Can't beat Iowa. You certainly can't beat the Chiefs. I will predict one thing that won't happen. If the Chiefs win, there will not – because there's people that think this – be a proposal. You could take that to the bank. I'm with you, Chris Cody. He's Zero the chance type. that there is a proposal on that field. Are there actual odds on that? Some what, people. Yeah. Have, what if yeah. someone else gets engaged then? Ooh. I had your bet. Swift and Kelsey will not get engaged <laughs> after the Super Bowl. And what do you think about Chris Jones' sack? Ooh. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me hey, rephrase. Yo. <laughs> Excuse what me. What do you think about Chris Jones' ability to get a sack <laughs> in this game? That right tackle for the Niners is a little weak. I don't know his name, but I know he's not good. <laughs> We're just regurgitating yes. everything that Mina, yep. Bill Barnwell, <laughs> Kevin Clark, and Dominique <laughs> Did It Did you awkward, by the way. Take on, uh, I, if I need to get your prediction, it is I indeed have to go listen to embargoed, else. and it was a safe take, but I'm sticking with it. I picked the 49ers to win by three. She did the thing where she went 27-24. Whenever there's a yep. score, that's what you guess. <laughs> it's either 31-28 sometimes, 27-24 is Tony, a good one. Roy. Dan, I feel a legacy game coming on for Patrick Mahomes. Ooh. You made the Dolphin Ooh. game a legacy I game. I know, and was it? <laughs> Every game's a legacy game, And was game, it? Dan. And then the Bills game, and then the Ravens game. Now this is another legacy game for Mahomes. <laughs> I think they're going to be trailing late. <laughs> Aren't all Super Bowls legacy games? I you, mean, don't you don't get it. You don't get it. I love Tony's breakdown. Hold on. It's a great question. You don't get it. Let him cook. This is also a legacy game for Purdy because all Super Bowls are legacy games. Right, right. But Tony has us in the fourth quarter right now. I've got it in the fourth quarter. Do you know, I didn't remember this. I was watching the last time these two teams played. San Francisco was up with six minutes left. Yeah, bingo, <laughs> which is what. All. That's all they needed to do was not three and out, and Mahomes would have lost. With that one throw. Jimmy Garoppolo had the throw, and he didn't make it. But So put us in the fourth quarter. Tom. Yes, thank Fourth you. quarter. Allegiant Stadium. Yes. Two minutes left. Oh, goose beast. Two minutes. Patrick Mahomes has the ball. Legacy Ooh. game. Timeouts? 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 Two timeouts. Wow. Ooh. Down four. Mm. Wait, 20. is this... Two minutes left. This is post two minute warning. Yes. We hit it even. Yes. Okay. So he's you coming get, out of two minutes. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. If left. the season Sorry, ended in two minutes. minutes. Plenty of time. Too much time. You expect him to go down the field and win. Right. Exactly. So he's coming out of the timeout with uh, the two minute warning with two timeouts. Two timeouts. Okay, good. Drives down the field. Yep. Fourth. They get a holding call on a fourth down. 
This is very specific. They go You're back 10 yards. Right, this is 10 yards. It's 4th and 20. Very Spoiler alert. The food is burning. 4th and 20. 4th and 20. 4th and, and 20. I love right. this. He scrambles out, gets left. a first down. Uh-huh. Right. He runs. He runs for a first down. I'm runs for a first down, a fourth and twenty. Yeah. Mm. Then throws a touchdown pass to Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony. Oh, yes. <laughs> Kadarius Tony. Get Best switch Best switch player of the week. Energy drink player of the week. <laughs> Roy, your prediction, Roy. As I was putting my equipment out here yesterday, I saw the maintenance crew, and one of the maintenance cards had a bucket on it, and okay. a brand name. I like I was it. Paint on it. That brand name, Purdy. I'm oh. putting my money. On the San Francisco 49ers. That's a sign. It's yeah, an odd signs. way to go oh, about gambling. I mean. The exact opposite of Tony's very specific <laughs> prediction. You think okay. we end with purring or what? How, how do we end? Can we can we time something musically that is emotional and hits the right notes with Hee Haw 3 that is only two members and Greg Cody? I'd rather just purr. I can't open you up the do that. club, We guys. can't open up the club. I can't, I can't do that. Open I, it? I can give you a Mike Tomlin. Splash. That's what I can do. <laughs> you want to give him a couple sounds? You want to give him a couple sounds? <laughs> Absolutely not. But I do like the idea of Greg Cody and the Hee Haw 3 taking us away. All right. Thank you, call. Las Vegas. Thank you, fans. Thank you, fans. You. Thank, thank, you, fans. thank 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 you, fans! And DraftKings. And DraftKings. The Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gotts is presented by DiGiorno. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Take it away, Greg Cody! Hey, a couple of times over the years on the show, I've referred to uh, wanting my outro song, my retirement song, to be uh, my favorite song of Jimmy Buffett's. And we lost him a few months ago, and, and it, it's my great honor to sing this song in his honor uh, today. So hit it, Yeti. Drink it up. Much 
too soon So drink it up This one's for you Honey It's been a lovely cruise Yeah, baby It's been a lovely cruise Oh, darling It's been a lovely cruise Man of me 